mountains are a magnet for prayerful Christians and church groups looking for a quiet spot for spiritual reflection and communion with God. The almost two-hour drive from Kumase towards Insuta takes us through a rather scenic route of majestic mountains and beautiful overhanging shrubbery. It bears no resemblance to any other place in Ghana. Really quite breathtaking. We have a 70% Christian population. And this place at Chia Mountains is fabled for its spiritual significance. People travel churches, travel in buses, just to climb up to the top of this mountain to pray. They believe that they will get healing if their prayer goes to God from this mountain. That's a powerful symbol, whether you believe in it or not. And it's worth checking out. It's worth a trip. You, the family, your friends, it's worth it to do the hike up this beautiful trail to the top of the mountain to see where it appears God's hearing is the clearest. Let's go. Now, Bisa has been going up and down the Achia mountain for how many years? Oh, four years. Four years? Yeah, four. Wow. These guys make a living from carrying food, water, equipment, baggage, and sometimes people up and down the mountain. How long does it take you to get to the top? Okay, if I'm going there with nothing there, I can use maybe 10 minutes to go. <laughs> 10 minutes. But when I'm going there with no door, maybe 35 minutes to 45 minutes there. Wow. And maybe some heavy load, you know, take me maybe 15 minutes. So yeah. somebody like me, oh, how long will it take me? Since I've never <laughs> done it before. Oh, I see. They maybe can use maybe one hour. What? <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We haven't even started, and I'm already tired. <laughs> so anyway, let, let's let's do it. Okay. Tell me, this place, mm -hmm. who discovered it? Okay, Reverend Osesib. Reverend Osesib. Uh, one of the Matthews priest. Uh, what's the story? How did he find this place? Okay, what I've heard is one day he was one of the uh, pastors at Efigasi. Uh -huh. Efigasi, that is his name. Mm -hmm. So he was going to Mampong to do a program. Okay, okay. on the other way going, uh, they get fought at the junction there. Uh, his, where, car. his car. Okay. Uh, where you came to come this time in Abayusia. Yeah. So that time is actually. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, so we on the the I on the I was 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 the I was the So he was leading them? He was leading them. Even though he had never been there, there before. Wow. But he was leading them too. Where they were going. It was not a him before he could do it. Come three hundred. So on the day, how many get? But I am casa. We do a whole na and a casa is a ha. At once, no mudu na and a casa chena. A whole mina turning to move color. all sorts of stories about this place. People trying and failing to make it to the summit. But I must say, it doesn't look so hard. If even little Bisa can do it, carrying luggage, then for big men like us, it'll be a walk in the park. Famous last words. What are you after today, baby? <laughs> we are going to use Travis. Hey. <laughs> you. Hey. Hey. I don't think it's possible to describe the marrow deep fatigue I was feeling at this point. It felt as if every cell in my body had been drained of its vitality. I had emptied my tank, my reserves and was running on fumes. Seriously, I couldn't feel my legs, I couldn't feel my arms, I couldn't feel my eyes, my waist, my teeth. I was struggling to find physical proof that I still existed. At a point I genuinely felt I was about to die. We 
aren't even halfway there. Hey! I can tell you, without a doubt, since I was born, this is the most tired my body has ever been. You would think it's a simple undertaking, but I swear to you, it's an experience you and your body will never forget, no matter how fit you are. We have been told stories of soldiers who stopped halfway and cried. I didn't cry, but I stopped about 10 times on my way up here. But you know what? Getting to this point, and by the way, we're not even at the end of the trail yet, but getting to this point comes with a sense of such achievement. If I've done Akia, you know? So it's like from now on, if anyone throws you a challenge, and you say, oh, wait, if I've done Akia, Thank you. Right here. Let all the things say amen. So what's the payoff at the end of that grueling climb to the top of Akria Mountain? What do you get when you get here? Well, for the Christians who make this a pilgrimage, let me tell you, they feel closer to God. Look at this, this is the actual prayer camp. Camp three, the Methodist prayer. And let me tell you, we have learned since we got here that on 31st of December, this entire expanse was full and you can believe it because they've got these speakers at all the vantage points so that wherever you're standing to pray, you will be heard. Not just by your fellow man, but by God himself. You can imagine that if you live in a city anywhere, it can get very loud. You can feel like there is a lot of interference between your voice and God's ears. But up here, there's nothing between you and your maker. And the Christians who come here firmly believe that this is the clearest connection they can have with the God who made them. But it's beautiful out here, so you know it's not only for those who are coming to pray, but for those who want to see the beauty of this nation, the beauty of Mampong, the beauty of the Asante region, the view from here, not bad at all. I recommend you take your family one weekend Bring them over and show them what God made. Well, what God has made planted in the Ashanti region, the Atria Mountains. If, like me, you've never been there, how about we all take a hike there one of these days and go and communicate with both man and God. And today being, of course, as we continue our series in Ghana month, that's how we kickstart the AM show. My name is Benjamin Akaku. Thank you for your company. Now, coming up today, we're going to be giving you the news shortly. And right after that, I'll be joined by my own buddy buddy, Samuel Kojo Brace, who joins me to review the major headlines from the newspapers. And as always, on a Friday, we've got prime take today. Expect Joy Sports Nathaniel Atto as he speaks to the dribbling magician. Do you have any idea whom I'm talking about? Dribbling magician from many decades ago. None other than Mohamed Polo. Uh huh. He joins Nathaniel Atto on prime take this morning. After that, today being a Friday, I'll be serving you this week's Blunt Thoughts, titled 66 Years of Ghana's Independence, The Good, The Bad, The Ugly. Where do we find ourselves currently? 
Stay with me for that scoop. But when we get into our big stories, former President John Dramani Mahama has hinted at the approach his administration will uh, adopt in dealing with corruption in the country. He is saying that he has placed the fight against graft high on his agenda in the build-up to the 2024 election. Now, speaking during the launch of his flag bearership campaign for the NDC, he said he had his eyes set on dubious activities, he says, are being perpetrated by the ruling government. We'd host a member of parliament on the ticket of the NDC as we engage Dr. Clement Apak on the show today on the different dimensions of the many things that the president is saying. He's saying we should help build Ghana together. And on social media, someone has taken him on uh, saying that is something that the MPP started, that phrase. Well, we'll be getting into that. We'll also tell you later about Rehoboth Social Housing and its latest projects. You know about our housing deficit in this country. And also on the show, Kwaba Foundation's drive to get you to donate blood. Ah, blood banks in the past have said that they've run dry. What is the state now and why this dry? Stay with us as we host the Kwaba Foundation. On the last leg of the show, we'd love to hear from you through your calls. But in the course of the show, share your thoughts with us. The hashtag is AM Show. On that note, let's settle for the news up next. Thank you for staying. In our first story, three of the security guards kidnapped in Y in 2022 are still yet to be found, according to Interior Minister Ambrose Derry, who has been providing an update on the killings. Now, last year, at least eight security guards were kidnapped and murdered in Y in bizarre circumstances. Ambrose Derry says 27 suspects were arrested, out of which eight were discharged on the advice of the Attorney General, with the rest still being prosecuted. Following the disappearance of five night security guards who were kidnapped by their assailants at different locations and subsequently murdered within the WAP municipality, a special intelligence-led investigation led to arrest, arrest of 27 suspected persons in connection with the kidnap murder. Out of the number arrested, eight suspects have been discharged per the Attorney General's advice. Fifteen suspects are on court bail awaiting the Attorney General's report or advice. Now, the current situation is that the police it's yet to locate and identify three other missing security guards. Namely, Alassan Yaya, aged 53, Sanwini Camilos, 42, and Dadigbe Kwame, aged 57. Currently, Mr. Speaker, there are about 300 operational policemen on the ground performing day and night mobile and foot patrols, including motor patrols. Police intelligence is also working around the clock for clues that will lead to the arrest of the perpetrators. Well, in a related incident, a 24-year-old dealer in second-hand clothing has gone missing for close to seven weeks after he was arrested by persons identified as police officers. Eyewitnesses say three of the men who arrested Razak Kasim at his premises at Ebuakwa in the Ashanti region were in police uniform and armed. The family of Razak has, however, combed several police stations in the region with no hope of where their relative is being kept. Nanai Aljima caught up with the stranded mother of the suspects who had traveled from Techiman to Kumase in search of her son and filed this report. Zak Kasim was picked by six armed men believed to be police officers on January 12, 2023. Three of them 
were in uniform. Eyewitnesses say the team arrived in two saloon cars and a pickup truck. All vehicles had no number plates. One other who is said to be an accomplice of the suspect was shot at the scene. They say no reason was given for the arrest. They say the policemen were armed. Three were in uniforms. They came in two white saloon cars and a pickup truck. They threatened whoever went close to inquire about the arrest. They didn't mention to the residents of the house where they were taking him, but I followed up at the central police station and even to the prison but couldn't find my son. The suspect, Razak, is said to have traveled from Techiman to Kumase to deal in second-hand clothing. His mother, Amina Audu, who lives in Techiman, has shuttled between Kumasi and Techiman for the past month, visiting police stations in search of her son. I am pleading with them. If he has gone contrary to the law, they should produce him so we can talk about it. I can't live. According to her, a policeman who works at Nkwanza in the Bono East region is the only known face among the policemen. Eyewitnesses tell me the only person they could identify is a police officer who works at Nkwanza. They say he had come to his parents at Ibuakwa to treat an injury. He said my son's friend was on the unwanted list, so he followed his colleagues to make the arrest. I hear they shot the boy and carried my son with them. Love News checks in the central police station in Kumase revealed no such suspect has been taken in. The mother is asking police to help locate her first child. For Joy News, Nanaya Ojima, Kumase. Now the state AMA basic school in Kumasi is in a state of near collapse as students are exposed to the risk of weak structures. School authorities are worried about government's failure to rehabilitate the school building. They want its reconstruction done to avert any future inconvenience. Lava Femme's Nanabwache Yadom now reports. The state MA basic school at Bantema in Kumasi was constructed in 1940. The school has over the past 70 years seen no major renovation. The school block has been deteriorated and in a near collapsed state. Most classrooms have been locked due to the threat it posed to students. So this is a portion of the busy school near collapse. This block has been declared a danger zone by school authorities. About 10 classrooms are being locked up considering the threat it poses to students. Major parts of the building are tattered with ripped off roofs. This has attracted encroachers to claim several lands off the basic school. So behind me is the wall of the Adventist Senior High School, Bantama. Ordinarily, the wall should exceed where the yellow bus is, but they have encroached major parts of the primary school lands. The school, which could accommodate about 800 students a year, currently has 100 students as anxious parents continue to redraw their wards. Chairman of the school's management committee, Peter Kwesipe Prajemfi, is worried about the neglect. The foundation of the, of the building is near to collapse and even the roofing, some of the roofings have been taken off. So considering all these things, we won't allow the people to come and sit in, inside and study because it's not even advisable for us to allow the students and the teachers to enter and study. The state of the school, if care is not being taken, if no action is being taken, we will wake up one day and hear that there is a kind of other tragedy or something that we are not expecting. I won't stand here and say I'm a prophet of doom, 
to bring any bad news or talk about talk of bad news about the school. But if care is not being taken and if immediate action is not being taken, I'm afraid to say something bad will happen to this school. So I'm appealing to the MP, who is also a product of this school, Honorable Asenso Boachi, to come into our aid and rescue the school. The accountant of the school's management committee, Bosiam Ponsamensa, called on the government and alumni of the school to come to their aid. Uh, regional minister, we are appealing to regional minister. Um, the two for completed this school. He came to state primary, state um, SHS. We are appealing to him, uh, Mr. Charles Rekubrobe Tazan. Uh, is also an old student here. Mr. Alan Chematen is an old student here. Um, a lot of people, we are pleading to all old students of state primary, state um, schools to come to the aid of the school, to come and then help raise the image of the school. Some students also pleaded for the renovation of the school building. The building is not good. I am afraid of the building can break. When I come inside today, I am afraid. If I am sitting inside today, I am not comfortable. We are pleading with government. Please come and face our school for us. We are scared. So among the about 20 classrooms here at the State MA Primary School, this is the only surviving classroom, as other classrooms pose a threat to the lives of students. For Joy News, Nana Boate Dan Koyadom reporting. Let's talk health now, and workers across the country have been entreated to cooperate with uh, one another in the discharge of their duties while abiding by the ethics of their professions. This, according to a former director of technical coordination at the Ministry of Health, Dr. Martha Jensal Lutrod, would ensure that the best care is delivered to clients at the health facilities. She was speaking at the UHAS White Coat Ceremony. 110 students who completed their preclinical training took part in the white coat ceremony, which symbolizes the beginning of the clinical phase of their training. They include 39 students from the School of Pharmacy and 71 students from the School of Medicine. A former director of technical coordination at the Ministry of Health, Dr. Mata Ganza Luderot, implored the students to inculcate the habit of teamwork in the delivery of their services. Honesty and trustworthiness is very key for you as a person. Joint white ceremonies are useful in team building. Pharmacology classes and other common shared courses are bridges to building the team. I believe that UHAS is uniquely placed to change the narratives of the health professional teams in this country. There is not something we called in my time Kusum. Uh, Kusum simply means that the doctor is not willing to listen to anybody and everybody knows that the treatment he's offering is not the best. And so sometimes um, the other health professionals come together and you Kusum just for the sake of the patient. It just simply means that the teams are not working. Because if the teams are working, you share ideas, you share your thoughts, you, 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 you engage, and I believe that the patient is the beneficiary. The Vice Chancellor of the University of Health and Allied Sciences, Professor Lydia Ziatu, advised the students to specialize as they progress in the profession. You have to fall in love with one, please. Don't fall in love too early. If not, the anatomy will change to pathology, you know. So there are areas, so you have to take your time and the God factor should come in, pray about it, and ask yourself, which one? It's not about how much the particular discipline or sub-specialization make, but what are you interested in? What is your heart beating for? So that you can do that one as your specialized area. And when you do that, you can deliver care better and you can achieve uh, better results or impact uh, better. Now, over the years, because I've been working in the clinical area also, you see some doctors who write and you cannot read. Uh, you write and cannot read. Please, as you start your clinical journey, make sure your reading is eligible for legal mistakes and all that. 
the white coat ceremony is a rite of passage. A ceremonious gate medical graduate pass through to start their path to becoming doctors. The students will do a one-year clinical service before being inducted as full doctors of medicine and pharmacy. Fred Kwame Asari, Joy News, Soccer Day. On that white doctoral note, we cap off the news. But stay with us up next, the news review. We'll be right back. And here we go on the AM show. Time now for the news review. I'm joined by my brother from another mother, Fatumis. That's what it is. Everyone. Oh, my phone. Oh, I've said what I know. Yes. Uh, oh, that, 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 that's the only ones, you know. I can go on, but it's not. It's, I'm limited. <laughs> if you're an otician, you, you understand that. Uh, oh, so you mean that part is like a lot of guan chi. Oh, I know I understand the, that chairman, Point. the NDC chairman. Ah. Because yesterday he gave a lot of background as to, you know, he's a chief. Well, some of us have to do a lot of explaining. Mm, okay. It's a bit chi dia, me kind of tree, a bube. Oh, okay. Yeah, what dear? Okay. Agro, is that okay? You boobe waha. Anyway, I will be there. Was it a young queen? Was it a dabber? Was it a man carry? You say? But, 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 but you know, this, this month is the Ghana month, right? It is. Yeah, so we should speak a lot of the Ghanaian languages. And I'm a boy. Mm, so, like this time, I come and sit here and say, Mabahi. Uh, but how would how how people know? You know, I saw something interesting on social media. You were singing a song in a hunter. Yeah. I, I, I watched all of it. I, yeah. I loved it. Yeah. It was beautiful. Yeah, there's this guy called uh, uh, Koba. I think is it Koba now Koba. Mm. Uh, the song is that so to it i'll share your word with the people god's word yes is, is that nyamle nyamle yes that's god because when i heard you know mm -hmm. often yeah. there are Variation. Yeah. Uh -huh. So when I heard Nyamle, I was thinking, Nyamle. Ah, is that Nyamle? Nyamle. Yes. So okay. God in our language is Nyamane. We are in the they say Nyamane. Nyamane. Uh -huh. So I would sing about you to the people. God, I will share your message with the world. You know why oftentimes I, I love it when you speak a Ahanta and all of that? And sometimes we spend a bit of time on it because that language is kind of nearing oh, yeah, extinction. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The Ahanta language is nearing extinction. Mm. So we do this intentionally so mm. that. I mean, people there, there was a time when, uh, back when Justice Beidou had his report, mm -hmm. you know, they were singing songs in the language and all of that, just to get the young generation, the young ones, to pick it up. Yeah. So the language doesn't go extinct. If you didn't know it, languages too yeah, yeah, go extinct. Mm -hmm. And ours is on the verge of. Very verge so, of extinct. Yeah, so we are deliberately trying to get things to work in our favor. And I hope that uh, we're able to get our kids to pick it up. And uh, you see a lot of us now trying to get our children to pick the language up. So let's see how it goes. Especially in, in Ghana month, what yeah. more 
fitting mm. a month to, to you know yeah. push this agenda. Exactly. Anyway, mm. let's get into the papers mm -hmm. and what they have for us this morning. I have the Daily Graphic, the Daily Guide, and the Ghanaian Publisher. What do you have? Okay, the Ghanaian Times, the Finder, and the Daily Statesman. Okie doke. So let's mm. get into it. I'll start with the Daily Graphic. Komende Dina Eguafu Ebrim, that is the KEEA, a constituency with myriad challenges. Uh, use of Ghana Card will sanitize voters, register majority caucus asserts. Residents want the Komenda Sugar Factory operational as soon as possible. As I share my blunt thoughts today on... 66 years of Ghana's independence, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm. I've been looking at some of the good things because it's not all bad. Oh, yeah. There are good things that have happened. There are bad things, and there are ugly mm. things that have also happened. And mm. the good things, the problem is many of the good things we couldn't build upon, mm. which is why we find ourselves where we are. Look at Nkrumah's industrialization drive, for example, mm. the factories he built. Now, 60 how many years later, mm. we start with 1D1F, and we can't even manage anything close to what he did back then. Those are the problems. Anyway. Black Bearer Ship Campaign Launch, I'll scrap ex gratia. That's according to John Mahama. I'll be coming to you for your take on that. Mm -hmm. Special supplement on Independence Day inside. Uh, let's look at this one. Former President John Dramani Mahama has promised to scrap the payment of ex gratia for Article 71 office holders if he wins the 2024 presidential election. He said... The necessary constitutional steps to stop the payments will start in 2025 if given the nod to become president again. Quote, the payment of ex gratia to members of the executive under Article 71 will be scrapped. The necessary constitutional steps to take on this will start in earnest in 2025. We'll also persuade members of the other arms of government to accept same, he said. He said this when he launched his campaign to become the flag bearer of the NDC. He also said he was aware of the enormi enormity of the task to fix the economy, but he was ready to take over affairs to perform that task. Uh, he said uh, there had been difficulty years stating that it had never been his wish that his political opponents fail. The former president added that he was not happy that President Okufuado and his government had failed to deliver. And maybe finally... The convener of the John Mahama campaign, Professor jo Joshua Alabi, said Mr. Mahama had proved himself as a nation builder and a leader of integrity over the years. What do you make of what Mahama is saying? Because listening to him yesterday, he said, he was saying basically that, look, give me the nod, I'll scrap ex gratia, at least from the standpoint of the executive, and I'll speak to or I'll plead with the other arms of government, aka the legislature, over which he would have some control if he wins and if his party, mm. you know, wins gets the majority. The majority. Mm. And then maybe a tricky bit, the judiciary, mm -hmm. you know. And, and here's where I find it interesting. I agree with him in terms of this ex gratia thing. Mm. It has milked us for quite a while. You've seen the reports, mm. the allocations, the sums of money people get. And the interesting bit about every four years. So you've had someone who's been in parliament for 20 years and every four years gets ex gratia. Can it be, it could have been a one-off so that after your term in office, but, but it would have been complicated, isn't it? Mm. So maybe the person comes to parliament after eight years, loses, doesn't contest again, but after another eight years, comes back. Maybe we could say once you pick your ex gratia, you don't get another ex gratia, no matter in what capacity you serve. But I agree in this instance with him that it should be scrapped, but the modalities, others have benefited. You mm. see, some members of parliament would be saying, ah, but you, others have benefited. Why don't you want me to also, you know, there will be people who will definitely feel mm. that. No, but there, there should be a there point have been where, beneficiaries. Why there should I be a point where people will sacrifice their comfort for. Mm. People will ask, their, why should it be me? Why should I be the one sacrificing? Well, the point is that did we, did some of us enjoy free senior high school? We didn't, isn't it? But some people are enjoying it today. So yeah, they will ask, but I think that they have to think about the entire nation instead of thinking about what they would enjoy. But, yeah, it's a good conversation for us to have. For example, why should it be that after every four years, someone will be receiving S. Gratia? Is that the same for the judiciary anyway? Ben, is that the same for the judiciary? Article 71 office holders, yes. That after every four years, they are paid S. Gratia? Uh, no, I think it's at the, at the end of their term of office. But if that's the case, then it means that the, 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 judici the guys in the judiciary will, uh, are being cheated. Because so, so it's, it is not that after mm. every four years, I, you, you I, give I them. do not, I mean, it could be disputed, mm. but that is not my, yeah. uh, so, what I am privy so, to. So, so I think that 
it should be, like you said, at the end of when you're leaving parliament. For example, like someone like uh, Oseche, Mr. Bonsu, mm -hmm. who's been in parliament for all these years, should be receiving it when he decides not to go to parliament again. Right. It shouldn't be after every four years because there's a lot that goes into it. But again, someone was uh, averting my mind to this or uh, practice that if we decide to then take away the air gratia, we need to then think about buying them cars and fueling it every day. Is that a practice? But there if, are there if, are there are loan arrangements for them yeah, already. But that's that, 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 that's for of, them. But which the are person, not part of the, the person was saying, system. In the judicial mm -hmm, system, mm -hmm. they also have, you know, as, as, some as, allocations mm -hmm. made to them. So. Yeah, so so it's it's something that as a nation we need to think about and look at the pros and cons. Mm. If we think the cons outweigh the pros, then yes, we need to do away with it. Because this is a country where we always complain of uh, a school structure somewhere that is collapsing, killing people. We need money to do a lot of things. So if we don't have the resources to continue managing this, let's think about it. Let's discuss it. And as a country, agree that, look, it's time we, we take it out and make it a one-time payment. That when you've come to parliament, maybe one, two, three, four terms and you've lost, or you've decided not to come again, then we pay you this lump sum. But in this instance, he is saying, let go of it altogether. We are not going to do that again. Plus, Okay. It, it brings me to, for example, mm. what football was and mm. what football is now. Mm. You remember during the times in 1982 when Abedi Pele was playing in mm -hmm. Libya? There was no, mm -hmm. in fact, a lot of our players have had promises made to them at some point that were not even kept. Yeah, fulfilled. It's in the Fourth Republic that we've really tried mm -hmm. to do a bit. Even here, there have been failed promises. Mm -hmm. um, so the Abedi Pele's and the rest, and for me, those were the, some of the golden mm -hmm. you know, eras mm -hmm. of our football. What did they get, really? Football mm. wasn't that monetized. Yeah, it then. wasn't. It wasn't. But today, you have people. We saw what happened in 2015, mm. 2014. Mm -hmm. People kissing money and <laughs> all of that. So, so if you are patriotic, look. Mm. When you go to Japan and other countries, mm. even here in Africa, mm -hmm. people are saying, "Look, I am in this position, or I am contesting because mm. I feel I have the know-how, I have that capacity, and I can serve my people." Mm. Rather than oh, I want to push and shove to get into this mm. spot because if I do, I'm going to get X amount of money, I'm going to get Y perks, and mm. in the end, I'm going to get Z in X gratia. Okay. I, I, I well, feel well, there should well, be some point where, as a nation, we mm. say, you know what, we couch it in such a way that you know <laughs> that there are not that many benefits mm. in there. Mm. If you come, it is rather... Uh, you are sacrificing a, for a the sacrifice. Country. And if well, you don't want it, you mm. don't go for it. Trust me, if we do it that way, a lot of the people who are pushing and shoving and trying to get into those positions, you see a lot of them fall off. And we'll see the truth in mm. that. Because you would know that, look, it's not, it's not an avenue for enriching yourself. Yeah. It's a place where you are going to have to serve and actually maybe even sacrifice your own resources. Do we, do we pay the ASNET? Like members of parliament. Oh yeah, definitely. There should be. There we should do. be. There, there shouldn't be per the law. There well, shouldn't be anyone who well. because this is what they are doing mm. on behalf of the state. Mm. So some way, somehow, I do not know the the exact. Okay. You so, know, so like I said yesterday, I was, I was speaking with someone who was telling me like all of these things. For example, the asnet and whatever, whatever. So the thing is that let's look at it. Let's spread it, and look at the itemized you know um, content of this whole thing and decide. Okay, because of A, B, and C, guys, we're going to take it out. Or because of A, B, and C, we're going to keep it, but we're going to do it just one time payment right. when you're leaving. Because I, I think that um, as a country, we should do things that would be able to manage. Like they say, cut your coat according to your size. You don't do things that you cannot have the money to run. Yeah. So if there are things that we decide, we, we think that we need money to do, and, and this is... This, Every four years payment of S. Gratia to MPs is not worth it. Let's scrap it, really. M maybe we can start from doing it a one-time payment. But entire scrapping off, I think it would, it, would, it would meet a lot of stumbling blocks. But yeah, yeah. it's something that it, with commitment we can, we can achieve. Let's uh, just look at other stories very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the supplement on Independence Day that I'll be looking at. Mm -hmm. But residents want the commender... <clears throat> Sugar factory operational as soon as possible. That's the KEEA hmm. uh, constituency. Mm -hmm. Use of Ghana card will sanitize voters' register. Majority caucus asserts. I'll take your two, uh, your views on those two points. Mm. But then looking at the evolution of local currency 66 years after independence from that independence supplement in uh, the Daily Graphic today. So they take a look at 
The West African pound, shillings and pence circulating in the Gold Coast, uh, the currency at independence. And then they look at the currency reform processes in Ghana after independence. Then the second currency reforms, the CD and the Pessoa. Then we also have, uh, you know, the fourth currency reforms. And we can come as far as the seventh currency reforms, redenomination of the CD in July 2007, which we have held on to for all this while. You know, there are some people who collect uh, money, you know, whether coins or... I've forgotten the te technical term. I, I, and they, the, some of them have a lot. In fact, my own mother has a lot of these from very old eras, including even Nigerian currency. It would be good you grab a copy of the Daily Graphic and take a look at a bit of history and what it has to share mm. with mm. us. But Commenda Sugar Factory and mm. then Ghana Card sanitizing the voters register okay. according to the majority. Quick, very quick um, thoughts on that. Um, but but l let me go back to the, uh, the earlier discussion and just, just bring this, this one in. Now this is by the African Research Consort. It says that Mr. Bagbin said they, uh, that any entitlement due these public office, office holders should be outlined in their contract with the state when they serve in office. Quote, as, as president, I will do away with the whole idea of Esgracia because I don't think that it's serving the purpose for which it was established. It's a complete waste. It's a contract employment and the contract will identify your entitlement, but not Esgracia, end quote. Article 71 and 2 of the, uh, 71 clause 1 and 2 of the 1992 constitution stipulates that the salaries and allowances of the executive, the legislature, and the <coughs> judiciary paid from the consolidated fund will be determined by the president on the recommendation of a committee of no more than five persons appointed by him and acting upon the advice of the Council of State. But I think that the composition of the people who enjoy this is just too broad. That political appointees, even the... the you know, for example, the, the OSP, uh -huh. because of mm -hmm. his... his um, the, the rank, the mm -hmm. rank, mm -hmm. okay, in mm -hmm. the judicial system. Mm -hmm. So he falls under Article 71. Mm -hmm. and, and I hear even that some of the problems with paying him have had to do with that, where mm. he lies and what his you know, financial expectations mm. are. Mm. You, you get it? Yeah. So we have so many people, so, yeah. and, and so, uh, we and hear there are presidential staffers. Exactly, that, that's my point. In there. So, so it becomes we, we, so broad. Yeah. Under the executive, for example, but that is also because of the chop chop, the, the, the jobs for the boys and girls. Mm. Because I think we could have streamlined it, but because these political parties also come into power mm. and they want to create all manner of jobs. Mm. I mean, look at some of the recent um, titles, job mm. positions we yeah. saw from, yeah. from, from the mm -hmm. Jubilee House. Mm -hmm. so, what so, are all so, of those? So, so this for Francophonie, that for Francophonie. So it's, What's it's, all that it's, So it's too broad. It's too broad. I mean, if you are going to add, add political appointees, even if, if you appoint me, to the flat time house and I'm going to take a, what do you call it, as gracious at the end of uh, four years. I mean, no, it's too broad. We should limit it to some, some people right. and, and look at how we can make it better. But to, to right. make it too open, it's, it's, a, it's problematic. Anyway. Let's make tracks. But Commander Sugar Factory, look, I, I, I wonder why we are still having this discussion about the fact that we have pumped in money to revive that factory. You remember the Exim Bank? Yes, recently? yes, yes, yes. I mean, the Mahama uh, government pumped how much? It's $30 million, isn't it? And, and then, and interestingly, was it not just last year that Ala Chamartin told us yeah. that he would revive the? Oh, even the, pres the and, president, the president went there. Some other yes. sum of money mm -hmm. and everything. I mean, our politicians, the, the least you know, I said about. You, you that, remember the traditional the authority in Commander at Neguafo came to the president. The president assured them that the company was going to be reopened because they've had an, a strategic investor who is coming to pump in money. Koji Yanku went there, did some work, and we saw that they were just about wrapping up things. Look at how the thing is. I remember when, um, um, uh, what's his name? Oh, how can that escape me? It's not Jojo Kobina. Mm -hmm. Also went there. Went there. Yes, yes. And had his documentary. Mm -hmm. You know, look, so, look, so, look so, at a facility in which we've pumped, let's say, about 50 million plus dollars, dollars. In, in what space, space of time? You don't, get to what, you don't get to understand how we run public you know, revenue in this Like country. someone was mentioning who spoke to me the other day. Mm. You, you pump money into Saglemi. You, you let it rot you let it, for whatever yeah. reasons. You pump money into this. You let it rot. Look at that. We are just killing this country for our own parochial interest because you cannot tell me that you've invested $30 million into this and over into this facility and it's left to be the way it is. I mean, the least, What kind of country are we? What kind of least, people are we? The least you can do, Kojo, let's say, oh, I'm the bad person. Mm. Let's say I was in office. 
I expended about $20 million into this facility. Maybe the actual cost was about half of that, mm -hmm. $10 million. Okay? Mm -hmm. You come, you can, you can do your due diligence. So let's say you are the good person. You come into office. You can do your due diligence uh -huh. and, and work on where the loopholes were while still ensuring that at least we get value for the original $10 million that we should have expended by operationalizing this. Uh -huh. You remember, you remember um, some of the no, sugar cane that, growers? Does this look like we've invested over $30 million into it? Well, you can't tell by looking at the outside because technical equipment. Mm -hmm. No, no, I, I, I know mm -hmm. what I'm telling you about. Mm -hmm. I've operated in the cashew industry uh -huh. before, for example. Mm -hmm. Sometimes looking at the outside of the building will not tell you. When you go inside the equipment, you see there and you know. Oh, you but know very our well journalists have been in, inside. They've been in there and, and done all what, of the things. Whatever, uh, what, whatever, what whatever, really, uh -huh. whatever the case may be, I am saying that these sums of money that have been expended, mm -hmm. whether it is 100,000, 1 million, mm -hmm. 10 million, 30 million, how is the Ghanaian taxpayer getting value for money from this rust bucket? How? How are we getting value for money? Rather, do you know what we're doing? We're bleeding. Oh. Because these loans that were contracted, guess who, whose taxpayers' money will be used to pay for oh. them? The ordinary Ghanaian. Charlie, this mm. country, this country is, we've messed it up and, and I think we should look ourselves in the mirror and tell ourselves that we let this country down. For all the good things or the good goals and visions that the forefathers had, the people who shed their blood to, to, to build this country for us, we've let the, them down big time. Because how are we doing things in this country that we push money into? public enterprises, and we let them die. We, we just leave them. Who can, who can tell us why Commander Sugar Factory is the way it is after almost six years, right? Six years of this government. Because when they were... I remember there's, there's this one in Takrade, GH, GHS Kofi. He used to tell me, Kojo, all the things these people are doing, they won't do it. We are here. We will see. And look, this man is the being... They are saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Because they I, think, said, I think we've got to the they, point they where said, we've learned that these they, politicians will they, just tell us anything. They said, oh, why do, you, why do you put up a factory and forget the raw material? So everybody was thinking that when they come, they would tackle the raw material. But in, in, which, in is why, which is why the farmers had been brought on board. You know now the farmers have gone to apologize to the Akwetishi dealers because they were not, yeah. no longer selling to mm -hmm. them, mm -hmm. thinking that they were going to the, sell to government yeah. for processing. And now they had to literally go and beg and sell their products cheap. Oh. The, the, the local gin distillers. But I also have a question on this entire, let me just go back briefly to the Article 71 bit. Mm. When former President Mahama says he will scrap it, he has been a benef beneficiary. And he's still benefiting. On many levels. Mm -hmm. You know, he's been through the system. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And from still, the very basics and of still governance, isn't it? through MP, mm -hmm. through vice president, mm -hmm. through minister, <laughs> through president, mm. and all of that. I don't know. I don't know, really. No, no, no. I don't. No. Look, I, I when, when did he get this epiphany? But well, he's saying, I mean, like he says in the Daily Guide, for example, no family, friends, government ever again, uh -huh, says, new, uh -huh. says new Mahama. Mm. Though, I mean, uh, and in the previous administration, you know, um, but the thing his, is that his, his mm. spokesperson now, mm. uh, Bawa Mokhtari, mm -hmm. Joyce Bawa Mokhtari, mm -hmm. was pointed to, though she was a bit of a distant relative. But in this instance, what I find worrying, you know, our, our politicians are so duplicitous. It's like a snake. You see how the tongue is forked. Mm -hmm. So a kasi, na kasi, mm. when it pushes its tongue out, they say one thing, do another. Because the, the last government I expected to engage in anything close to family and friends was this administration mm. on the back of the things they said. Mm -hmm. But just look, everywhere you go. And, and, and like they say, it's a quadruple of Once this man has done it before, once this man has done it before, the question is, how can we trust that he won't do it again? But he says, believe me now. And the element of so trust, trust mm -hmm. is what I feel is is the most maybe uh, in terms of political cost mm -hmm. is is the one that we we have lost the most to. Yeah. Do you remember mm -hmm. a few years ago? Mm -hmm. Um do you know the number of people who sometimes speak to me and say, hi? Hey. Ah, well, that's yeah, what well. it is. Let's, let's quickly but do that. As, as, as for Commander, it's a blot on, on, on the conscience of all of us. We should, we should try and do something about it. Mm. Now, protecting public press, okay, I think we've done this, so we'll move on.
Ghana card as sole ID for voter registration. Majority back CI says it will sanitize, purify voters' register. Chinese delegation visit Accra ahead of March government mission to Beijing and the special independence anniversary pullout. Now, Ashali Botre School Junction Meda accused yet to be, uh, yet to execute bail bond. Okay. Okay, so I think that, uh, let, me, let me do the one on the uh, new CI. Now it says, the majority caucus in parliament has thrown its weight behind the Electoral Commission's proposed constitutional instrument, which seeks to make the Ghana card the sole document for the purposes of identification and registration as a voter. According to the caucus, the National Identification Authority system that produces the Ghana card was robust and would ensure that only eligible Ghanaians secured the card to enroll onto the voter roll. Ben. So, I mean, all the issues about our uh, voters' card being full, full of, uh, and our, uh, you know, containing some foreigners. Yeah, the Ghana card is, is something we all agree that contains some specific, you know, data for Ghanaians, isn't it? I, I don't know why we are, we are making this a whole debate. If we believe that a Ghana card is the document that we're all working towards to become, that one-time document that, that can, can, can contain your driver's li license, uh, you know, data, your passport data and everything. Why must, it, must, I'm must we... I'm tired of carrying around my SNIT card. And, and they took my biometrics how many years ago? You remember? Yeah, SNIT. It's, it's nice. Yes, yes. Carrying... Uh, that, that was in carrying, 2013 or so, or 14. I'm tired of carrying all manner of cards. Mm. I agree with both sides <clears throat> on this matter, both mm. the minority and the majority. Okay. The Ghana card is the future. Mm -hmm. It's the way to go. And don't you forget, other administrations had tried it. You get it. They were mm -hmm. just not able to fully execute it. But my problem, why I also agree with the other side is, can we ensure that anyone who qualifies to get it and who qualifies to vote ahead of 2024 will get it and be able to use it to register to vote? So mm -hmm. that is my point. Okay. It's the way to go, but how can we ensure on the back of the $117 million we owe and the promises made by the finance minister? Mm. Now, I don't know how you take the promises well, of the finance minister. Well, well, I don't take them too seriously mm, mm. Uh, on a rather serious mm. note because yeah, because of he what, has what, proven what, to what me seen. that I, mean, mm. I, I can take whatever he says with a grain mm. of salt. Mm. So, um, no, but, 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 but I think, look, we, once we want to build a system, mm. we should trust the people who are who have been put in, in in charge and ensure that we police it well. I mean, the N N NIA is it is one entity. The Ghana card, especially, I think, is, is something that is will help all of us if we are able to utilize its benefit fully. Right. We just have to ensure that things move. But well, it, it's a debate we need to have. But let, let's ensure that we cut the too much, you know, debating to ensure how can the system be effectively implemented. And 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 let's move on. But there's this editorial in the Ghanaian Times, which is good. It says, right. stop cheating in land acquisition. One of our major headings at the has, country. Has, has been yeah, that's, that's where they base their, their editorial. I think the Amakum Hine, he... he Charlie, uh, the, there was a land issue. Land and, acquisition and he in ruled Ghana. ruled in favor of the, the private citizen against mm. the Amakum Hine. I think the Bantama Hine also... Look, also. land acquisition in Ghana is so terrible, especially in Greater Accra, with what I've seen. Mm. It's just terrible. It, it needs to change. Because people c cannot even trust that they can, they, can get, they can get their lands when they buy them. But there's something else, not just land grabbing by political forces themselves. No, 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 no. Look, you go to a place like Roman Ridge, mm. other places, I'll tell you, state assets and everything, all gone. Privatize them. Gone. Okay. When I say gone, I mean gone. You can go and investigate, and I know what I am saying. Mm. It said that when a blind man says he will stone you, you know... He has his foot. Yeah, on, 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 on something. Trust me. Okay. And the way party in, party out, state assets are captured, sold, made to benefit individuals. I shudder for this country. We may wake up one day and realize that, oh, we actually have no clothes on. Our leaders have sold the very clothes on our backs. <laughs> the Daily Guide newspaper, NDC peddling lies on EC. There's also, like I said, no family friends government again says new Mahama. Otum 4 calls for clean campaign if you're going to do this campaign in the appropriate manner. 250 motor riders arrested and Registrar General exposes a black one. Let me quickly go to <clears throat> uh, page six and then I'll come and do some international stories. So 250 
Motor riders arrested. In a new offensive against motorbike riders in discipline, especially those who jump red lights at traffic intersections, the Ghana Police Service has arrested over 250 motorbike riders. And that definitely a step in the right direction. Also, 12 cybercrime suspects arrested. That story we've been looking at. I just want to take a quick look at some international stories. You follow the Greek train crash, right? Yeah, yeah. Deadly. 46 people now killed. It was initially 32. Mm. Rail workers across Greece have begun a one-day strike after Tuesday's train crash, which killed at least 46 people. Pain has turned into anger for the dozens of dead and wounded colleagues and fellow citizens, the workers' union said in a statement. Uh, the walkout follows protests in Athens, Thessaloniki, and the city of Larissa, near the site of the disaster. Do you know what I find interesting about the Greek event? Mm. The minister in charge. Do you know what? Resigned. Shortly after the event. Resigned. resigned. The, the, the station master. Resigned. No. He's Never. been charged with manslaughter. Okay. Systems work. Here, mm. we have a shortage of vaccines. Yesterday, I was engaging the Tamale North MP, Al Hassan Suini. In his place, there's an outbreak of measles, not just in Tamale, uh, Greater Tamale, other areas within the Northern Belt. And our health minister is unfazed. And this is even worse, excruciating, on the back of what happened with COVID-19 and accountability. So you see the gap in our thinking, mm. in our effectiveness and efficiency, and how seriously we take the work we do. People feel they are tied to the work, almost as though if they were not there, the work wouldn't go on. It will definitely go on. Mm. You'll get someone who is either better than you or less <laughs> good, but whatever be the case, the work will go on. We'll prove we won Nigeria election. Peter Obi says so. I heard this loud and clear yeah. yesterday. Mm -hmm. and, he, and that means they are taking the matter to court. Uh, let's, let's wrap with a few sto more stories. Anyway, uh, the finder, Kofuado, congratulates Nigeria's president-elect, Bola Tinibu. Uh, so on the back of what uh, <laughs> Peter Obi is saying, 2023 hatch fair pegged at 75,000 cities. That's a, it comes with a picture of Ben Abdullah Banda. NDC NPP clash over ECCI to use Ghana card as sole identification for registration. I'll scrap as Gracia for members of the executive. That's according to former President John Romani Mahama. I have a comment coming through. So this one says uh, Idrisu Issa is responding to something I said about so former President Mahama. He has also benefited from ex Gracia. Mm -hmm. And now I think mostly the bit about no family friends government again, says New Mahama in the Daily Guide. He mm -hmm. says... So what is wrong if he now says he will change it when giving the nod? Mm. You know, the, the problem with our politicians is, uh, or the people, once bitten, twice shy. Twice shy. So sometimes, who will be BR? Yeah, no, nah, no. Nah. Because you may not, not have the opportunity. Mm. And, to, and, the, and that, that, that's the, the trust issue. Yeah, that's the and, and he should understand that you're coming from a point of view of, well, politicians say what A and do B. Exactly. That's why you are. I'm not faulting him yeah. as though he were alone. Yeah. Mm. I'm just saying that generally... Uh, there are credibility issues. Mm -hmm. uh, the Daily Statesman? Um, Just look at the well, headlines. Let me also okay. look at these headlines. Akufuado optimistic about deep in Ghana Nigeria relations, evolution of the local currency 66 years after independence. Majority support EC on use of Ghana card for continuous voter registration. Daku Mensa, that's the Western Regional Minister, Takwadi PTC interchange will be completed. Uh, NPP takes on Mahama. And the interchange, when I go to Takrade in the night, I just love what I see. Unfortunately, uh, it's hanging. Let's see what, what we can do to complete it. The Ghanaian publisher, my final newspaper, minority confused about new CI. Majority leader says so. Boku crisis, Kusau youth accuse NDC of hypocrisy. Mahama promises to scrap ex Gracia. Court stops Opebia House car park project. And ICOMS shuts down for maintenance. So what I was looking for in terms of a collector of money, whether cotton money or paper money, or especially coins, is a numismatist. I knew I, I had it in my mind, but I wasn't sure. Mm. And the study of it is, or the, uh, is numismatics. So that is it. Someone who collects money, mm. coins and all of that, especially coins, mm -hmm. is a numismatist. Okay. And the, the, the practice or that field is numismatics. Oh, okay. Yeah, man. Hey. Anyway. Anyway, Ben, the English teacher. Uh, so let's, let's just uh, let you know that mm -hmm. uh, this segment, the news review, is brought to you by Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic. We're offering free prostate screening and free female fertility screening. Locate us in Accra, Spintex, opposite the Shell signboard. Kumasi Kronumabwe here behind the Angel Educational Complex. Takwa Dianaji Estate, Tema Community 22, Techiman Hansua, and Esiyama Nzima. You can reach us on 0244 867 068 or 0274 234 
three, two, one. Endpoint homeopathic clinic, the end to chronic disease. Well, we take a bit of a break and return with, you know what, sports. Do stay with us. And then we'll take a break. Thank you very much, Legend, for your time. It's always great to have your company. It's a pleasure. I'm, I'm glad to, to see you again. You look, you look well. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good, 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 good. Yeah. You know, in, in recent times, you've, you've been in the news for some very positive reasons because you presented a five-year development plan to His Excellency the President. Um, why a five-year development plan to the presidency at this time, in 2023? Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Nathaniel. Uh, everything has got its time. And uh, life is, is like a, a processing, uh, you know, through, you know, a certain grounds mm. for achievement. As you really said, I mean, I was I really, you know, you know, touched with your expression of uh, who I am. You know, uh, sometimes uh, you, 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 you don't have to be carried away. You, know, it, 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 you have to be focused in whatever you're doing. And I think uh, football has given me life. And uh, taking football as a, as a, as a, as a career, not, a, not as a profession, it was a career first, because at our time it's amateur. Uh, fortunately, we entered into, you know, uh, professionalism, uh, you know, period, before even retiring, and uh, we tasted it. We thank God that uh, we, we, we have the taste, because that is where, you know, it involves a lot of you know, eyesight, for people to see really what football looks like. I don't think you've seen much of me, but you've read much of me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you had seen what much of me, you would have said, if I have been in this era generation. Of, yes, yeah. generation of professionalism, it would have been a different thing. That's why some people look at me and say, ah, this, look, this guy looks like, uh, you know, who, you know, comparatively, what, what Messi have done, I mean, mm. Messi is one of the best. We cannot run away. But Polo looks different. Those who have seen Polo, you know, so, somebody will wonder who has not seen me. But those who have seen me will accept that, yes. But sometimes. Abedi Pele said it once that you and uh, Maradona are the only two players in the world who are better than him. Exactly. Exactly. And this is one of the critics in Ghana football. Abedi Pele has seen it all. And if he has, even Osei Kofi, I saw Osei Kofi, a glimpse of Osei Kofi, and I know this is a gem. But Abedi, you know, I, he, he looks after me. And I, I, I'm one of his, his inspirers. Because I remember coming from Dubai, I look at him, I say, my friend, don't waste your time. Oh. Because we, we have really, you know, got it here. We've played our football here. But the, the little chance that we had, you know, outside, people are asking, why, 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 why didn't you go to Europe? At that time, the, the, the interest, you know, uh, with the African football and Europe, it's not that, you know, my, the interest was not there. But today, I mean, everybody wants to go to Europe. That is where the, you, you will be seen properly. And uh, because football has done, become, a global village, even if you come to your country, they will follow you if you are a quality player. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, what do we call club champ? Even at the club side, club championship, we have uh, AFCON. Yeah. We have, uh, 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 what do we call them? You know, Chan, you know, and all of all this. So it's, now football has become 
a global village. Wherever you are and you go, you'll be seen. Mm. So it's very important that we, you know, we have to take football very serious and take it at the level that it deserves. Mm. And that is why I'm coming out with this... Uh, Five-year development plan. Okay. Now, um, what are you suggesting to the president and all of us as a football collective within that development plan that you have submitted? What are the key areas or the key milestones within that big document yeah. that you are, you, are, you are putting across? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, 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 these are, if I remember very well, you know, I remember, you know, Ben Kofi's time. Yeah. When he do some something five, similar, similar five sure. years de development plan, and uh, we saw what came out of it. That is where, you know, the the uh, I don't know, the Makelesians, the the uh, Suleiman Taris, uh, the, the Stephen Pierce, and you mentioned them. You know, from that uh, tender age, from seven, I think they played under seventeen, Very and well. moved to twenty. And, uh, sure. I, I think that this is one of his, his, his projects of five years ago. I sat down and looked at, you know, it because I was part of, uh, because Ben Kofi was my coach. Yeah. I've gone through all these coaches, the, 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 um, the, the, the uh, Osami Dudus and then the, the uh, what do you call it, three of them before they pass out. So I, I look at it in the, the sort of quality f football that we were playing and, uh, they, and looking, you know, the sort of technical direction we went through before playing that, that kind of football at that highest level. So I wonder how we, 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 we are playing that, that quality football. Because our coaches, you know, I'm, I'm sorry to say, they were able to identify good coaches, you know, and if I knew you know, what we were doing. We, we, we remember when we were in camp and okay, we don't do much with the ball. We don't do much with the ball. We do some sort of uh, exercises and whatever it is, you know, before we have a, a, a game to play. But we are playing, you know, some sort of a, 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 a quality, you know, football that has some technical direction. You think we don't have technical direction now? Yeah, I think uh, even that time we have a technical direction mm. because that is, that is the football that we're playing. Mm. So those who were in charge, whether we like it, whatever they taught us, you know, they were in charge. So they must be taking, they must be giving the what, the credit. And we won how many uh, 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 Nations Cup? Four. Four times, from '63, '65, '78, '82. And uh, we saw the quality players that, that were there. And they, they, they can testify it. Mm. You know, some of us are getting the chance to, to talk. But individual, we all know what is happening. Even uh, when, when we're playing uh, you know, mm. in, a, in a various teams. Very well. So, so how are we going to replicate the successes of yesteryear um, to current day? Because uh, truth be told, things have changed. There is technology, there is, uh, you know, the, the methods that are being used in coaching now are different and all of that. So how are we, based on what you have suggested, uh, you know, to the presidency, going to get all of this to work for us? Yeah, I, I think uh, life is our vision. Okay. And, and, and direction. And then comes with a passion. I've started, you know, I, I became a coach as a coach player. I was not even a, 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 one of the smallest teams who has of course, I, I played, a, I coach as coach player. When I've, I haven't been to, you know, uh, coaching uh, uh, with the uh, multi-system man. The late coach Adi. The late coach Adi. I thought he was grooming me, but I appreciate it. Because he gave me the chance even to talk to players. Whilst I'm also, a, you know, part of the, 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 the players, I give comments, you know, before even the match. Very well. And I realize I have something. So if this coach has given me this opportunity, he's telling me that I have something to do. 
in future. Mm. And then I, I went to, to uh, for some reason, I have to leave. That same year, I retired. That was 93. I retired 93 after 21 years of active football and to Olympics. And the same thing, I went there and they were having some challenges. I said, they should give me the chance. I can change the, 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 the situation of, of the technical direction. They were having some problems. I mean, the, the, the way you know, they respect me. Oh. So they gave me the chance and I took over. I played nine consecutive matches without a loss. You know, I remember I had a problem with in that uh, with the Olympics. You know, you remember there it is, it's famous. Some people do ask me, why were you substituted and refused to come out? And I told them that I was then the coach. You know, a coach player. Though there was somebody assisting me, but I, I, I know it, the, the the sort of telepathy is there that. I, I'm the final person who, who should give the, the, the decision. The decision. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I didn't just come uh, you know, to head that uh, you know, position just by chance. And what I'm doing, so, you know, human being, there's always some sort of way to frustrate you. So oh, come out. I look at it. Uh, what what, what, what are you doing? We went to the recess. I give them the, the, what I want to be done because I was in charge. And we were playing well. And I told them what should be done. You know, when things are not going to And I look and they were changing, rather they were changing me. <laughs> I, I, if I, I have to change myself. If yeah. I know I can't you know, play, play yeah. I will change myself. But mm. not in this situation. Mm. So I refuse to, to, to come. A interesting historic perspective you're giving us here. And if you just joined us, we're spending time with the legendary Mohamed Polo, uh, an Africa Cup of Nations winner and one who has uh, tasted glory on the domestic scene with winning a minimum of six titles with uh, the glorious Accra Hearts of Oak. We're taking a look at what is uh, the thought behind his presentation of a five-year development plan to His Excellency the President of Ghana. Now, uh, you, you presented this uh, ideally um, in terms of development and promotion of the game. It's the Ghana Football Association. We didn't see any element of the Ghana Football Association in that uh, gesture that you made to the presidency is there any reason why have you uh have you had a chat with them because they are the principal uh you know the principal you know workers or the principal movers of the agenda for development of football yeah i think you you're right uh, uh before you know i got to that level you know, that is why you ask me, you see, I've dodged all these, uh, you know, questions and you still come, come in with it. <laughs> you see, I, I tried to explain, you know, how I even became a coach. Oh. And uh, I, I've, gone, I, I've been in, in, in coaching course. I've been to Germany on uh, attachment and then I, I, I have, uh, you know, my uh, course with, uh, in Pran Pran uh, through uh, this, uh, I mean, we've, all, we've been through it. But something is a gift. You don't waste it. And a, a gift, you know, need to be given to others who needed it. So, after going through all this process, I've been a coach since '93 up to date. Oh. So, if I, my understanding of how football looks like, as a technical, every coach has his philosophy, and that is the difference, you know, with every coach to win him a match. And uh, apart from the fact that you, you need to have quality players today, you know, you see people buying players here and there, they need quality. Even that, they haven't, you know, challenges. Are they not good coaches? They are. But it, it, you, a coach who, 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 who worth its sort, you know, is coach, you know, who, has, who can innovate things, who see things in a different way, can add some value when it's, it's, it's possible. If you are lucky to have players who can give you what you want, fine. But if you can have value, you see that you are always there. But the situation is not like that. Today, the question you ask, yes, before I did the, all these people are in the know-how. Okay. So, all, of, so, all of them are in the know-how. So, 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 so the Ghana the FA are aware of this five-year development very plan. Very plan. Have, have you, have you uh, submitted it to them as well? Have you given it to them as well? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, 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 that's what I'm saying. Okay. 
I have know. they have they shown the kind of interest that you're you're hoping they will show? Very, 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 very. It started with him with the launch of my book. Okay. You know, and I invited you know the, the, I invited the president, but for some reason like, he couldn't come. But fortunately, you know, the GFA president came, and a very tight schedule. He was traveling that day. And luckily, I sent him a, a, a text message. He, I think it was he decided to come. And when he came, the, 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 the luncheon was when we have to give him the chance to express him, himself why he came. And he, he was give us a very encouraging words. And that was my day. So anybody who comes to the luncheon, you know, you could, the person really have polo at heart. Even though some people may not, you know, be, be there for some reason, and I know, you know, they were there with me in spirit, mm. and I saw it. Do you do you feel that uh, you have told the story, your story, your football story in full, in the book that you launched? Do you think? I mean, when you sit back and you reflect, do you feel that there are aspects of your story which? you need to add maybe like in a second volume or otherwise? Yeah, I, I think uh, it, it depends on uh, those who know who's, who Polo is. And uh, this gentleman, me and uh, has done yeah. well. It was one of the, 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 the sports writers who started. He was a graphic guy, I've forgotten, I always forget his name. Okay. He died so early, very young, young man like that. Samuel Kainte. Samuel, oh God. May the so, late Samuel Kainte. Yes, the yes. late. May so rest He started it. And just like that, he fizzled, he fizzled and God called him. And this gentleman came up. And he has followed me since my journey. Because if he's giving my story as if he has seen, you know, me in everything. That, and it is true he has seen. Because if I've read the book myself, I'm seeing the, but the picturesque of what Polo looks like. Mm. But... You know, there is a lot to be told about Polo. Okay. Especially those who knew who Polo looks like. Very well. Now, um, we're still on development and how you'd want to see things go currently, or, or how you'd want to see things go in present day. Um, you are looking forward to building an academy. And uh, currently, I know you're raising resources. You are putting resources yeah, together yeah, to get yeah, that done. Yeah. Now. What kind of development structure are you proposing, uh, you know, to the presidency regarding how our development structure should look like? For instance, there are those who argue that now we should move towards the academy system. There are those who say, oh, the academies are just in there to do business. They are selling players and all of that. Where do you stand on this regarding the proper structure we should lay for, uh, you know, the, the, the juvenile level? Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, that everything in life has an advancement. Mm. You know, we saw what coach look, football looks like, where, where it's coming from. And coach football is, is the love of the team and the passion that people have and they, they gather youngsters to, pl to play. But this is something in ad an advanced way, you know, the academy. Okay. But it so you agree with the academy system? Yes, I do. Very but well. that doesn't, you know, Trashed away from you know the course uh, completely. You know completely. Okay. Because you know uh, the course may, may go there and then uh, 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 I mean uh, resurrect some people or I mean on earth you know somebody and then the academy will come and pick it from there and continue from where it is because they they are, the course are just you know the love of footballers they want to play. You know, but course, technically, you know, they have something they, they, they are putting in place. They have some structures. And without the structures, you know, and you know, comparative you know, course, you know, it's nothing to, to talk about. So course is an advantage. So I feel, you know, it, it has to go, this depending on, uh, your, but, but it has to go with quality of what you want to, you know, in, 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 implant mm. or, 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 or in, you know, infuse into the youngsters. Okay. Because we have a, a, a style of football. Okay. We have, you know, we've seen the quality of football that, that Ghana has produced in, 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 from time immemorial, even now. But it looks as if that, that trend you know, is, is coming, you know. Why, why, why is our style of football, uh, you know, 
eroding. You're saying that it looks like it's coming down. Um, why? What is, what, what is it that we're doing to erode our style of football? Yeah, I, I think uh, what, what I'm seeing uh, is that the, 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 uh, the technical direction of uh, football is going, you know, European style. Okay. Because, you know, academy is taking, you know, the, 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 the space, is taking every control because they want the players to play the, the European, you know, style of, so that when you go there, you can be in that. But, no, no, that, that, and that is totally, you know, you know, unacceptable to me. Because if you are trained, if you have a, your, your style of football, and you are trained the way, you know, our style of football, you know, goes with even those we know that plays the quality, including myself. Because those of us who play that quality are those who made a mark. Even qualification to the work, we're playing to the, at the World Cup. We saw what the, the, the quality of our football looks like. You could see the brand of our football. To the extent that, you know, we nearly went to even to the, 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 the semi-finals when Suarez and okay. That was the fourth time, if I'm not, no, the third time. That was 2010. Oh. And Ghana football, you could see. But all of a sudden, you know, it goes up, down, up, down. What, what, what are you suggesting, what are you proposing we, we do to remedy that situation of having our own identity for our football so that the European style doesn't seep erode, into it or erode, or erode it. What, what, yes, yeah. exactly. What, that, what are you that, suggesting yes, in, your, in your plan? That is why I'm mm. putting this, uh, you know, the, 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 the brand in, in place. Mm. The, 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 the introduction of our brand. Okay. Because these are youngsters, this generation, they are coming, they don't even know. Okay. What? They don't know. So If we're asked to describe, because we keep talking about the brand, the brand, and Somebody just wants to understand in very simple terms what is what is our style of play. I mean, you mentioned to the president that uh, we we have what we called a growth football. Yeah. Okay, so what is a growth football? Like? Yeah. Is a growth football uh, a systematic, slow-paced passing game? Yeah. Is it something that is always running, maybe running on the wings and playing attacking football? What is our our identity yeah. of football? Uh, our identity, mm -hmm. in in short, mm -hmm. very short term is that. You know, uh, we, we, we have to play, we have to produce, you know, some sort of quality, but we, which we have all these players who, who, who have that quality, who won us that laurels, have that quality, have that identity. If I mention it, you get it. You know, we have players who are fled, uh -huh. players who have artistry in their game, players who are creativity, players who are confidence on the ball. If you look at this, this, these players that went through the process and won us, you, you accept that players who were then, you know, who made it in that, you know, generation and gave us that interesting, you know, game, you know, have that quality. Okay. So the style of play should uh, encompasses artistry, skill, and uh, confidence and flair, as you put it, and creativity. And creativity. Yeah. Okay, and that is what defines our game, yeah. is that it? The yeah, Ghanaian game? Exactly. Okay, so now um, going forward, I mean into the future, if your, your plan is implemented or is adopted by the FA fully, um, what kinds of changes do you expect to see or should we all see in the way our national teams are organized and on the general scale of our club football at different levels, what what changes should Mohamed Polo's development plan bring? Yeah, I, I think uh, what, what, what I'm trying to do mm. is, uh, is, uh, is a general thing that I'm, I'm trying to infuse. I'm, I'm not doing it a one-sided thing. Yes, you know, around the, you know, uh, Accra and stop there. Okay. I'm going throughout the region. Mm. That is, you know, that, that is where my, 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 my vision has, has expanded to. Okay, so you, you want know. to go around the regions yes. to do what exactly? To do recruitments of players or to, to teach or to do what? Yeah, you know, somebody, that, that, is, that is a very good question. You know, I'm going there 
to introduce you know, that brand to them. You know, by taking them through a certain process okay. of technical direction. Okay. And I tell them, and, and, and I, I leave a sort of mark there because I, 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 I've got to, so I have to have some people to work with in every region that I'm. So we, we put this mark there for them to carry there. But before I do that one, I'll pick, you know, the best ones because I cannot pick everybody. At least, you no, know, uh, the, 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 the lucky ones, but the best ones and bring them down. And then I will, you know, take them through myself. As I've left a mark over there, a technical direction them. Okay? Then I will look. I mean, we are in Ghana, so once a while, I liaison with them and find out what they're doing. You, 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 you understand? Yeah. And then, if 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 it's even possible, at a point in time for some uh, a first year, a first year of my my because I'm I said it's five years you're on my plan. First year, I have to go around with even the players that I have. I I, see. I train them. Okay. I train them and go playing some, you know, matches. Um, in wrapping up our conversation, Mohamed Polo, I, I would want to know what your plan is as well regarding, you know, getting technical people and training them with the Mohamed Polo prescription for developing our football so that uh, years on, when your energy, you know, no your energy cannot can push you me, yeah. and carry you along, they yeah. can carry on. What is the plan on the technical side as well? You've talked about players, but what will be the plan on the technical side as well to get yeah. technical people moving with these ideas? Yeah, it's, it's, it's wherever I will go, you know, I ensure that I you know, have people who are very interested. But before then, I have to, you know, get some of the, 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 the the youngsters who are very, because there are players who are just retired recently. You know, if I look at some of them, you know, who, who are very sober, they want to learn. I know them. You know, life, if people who want to learn, you know, when you see them, they listen. They listen to what you say. But there are some, they feel they also play, they know. I mean, it's normal. You can't get everybody to, you know, to take to tour what you, you want, but you have some people. And uh, I feel, you know, going around even throughout the regions, there's going to be some, some, some you know, youngsters who will be interested, you know, with the idea that I'm coming. But, and uh, I'll see, you know, if, if I can, you know, get them together for, for, to leave them, to leave that, you know, inspiring, you know, direction that I have now for them to carry on. I know, whatever it is, I have to let you know that this is my line. Definitely, you may have your, your, your addition. There is no problem with that. Life is full of, uh, you know, uh, what do we call it? Uh, ideas, definitely. But this is how I want you to go with what, what, what. So if you add something to it, there's no problem. In life, there is always an additional, you know, thing that you may have. Because you, 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 you look at something and you think it should be done this way and you want to do this, I don't have a problem. But this is my line. Great. Make sure that you go with my line for me to see what comes up. Because what I am going to do, when I bring my youngsters to you, because I'm going to take some, the lucky ones you know, that I'm going to get, in, they will play football and everybody will say yes. This is a grown ma. The brand that I'm talking about. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mohamed Polo. Uh, we're very grateful to you for the time. But uh, uh, just before we, we call it a show, uh, I'd like you to send a message to the family of uh, Christiana Chu. He's uh, one of the people who I'm sure brought smiles to your faces, um, gave you, you know, uh, reasons to reminisce on what you used to do as youngsters. Yeah, you, you, you're right. You're right. If, if, if I look at, uh, you know, at you, I watch some, 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 some of the clips that, and you could see the quality that he has. And so soon he just, but he has done a lot. 
going through what you know we, we had. No, I think uh, you know uh, 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 it's done. Do, do it a, a very short, you know, time. It's done people something that people who even live you know hundred years will not do. Fifty years will not do. Seventy years will not do. Thirty one years with what he has done, with the sort of you know the, 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 the sort of support that he has given to you know the the the. the those who have who, who who don't have because he's telling his stories that he went through it and whatever he was doing you could see that he is he, doing it and that because he feels these people need it and those who need it you know as you know appreciate it and that is what I you know you can imagine what this the, the way the, 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 this, the, how these people will miss Achu. Yeah. You can imagine. So we know, and God does things in his own way. Nobody will question it. Only God knows. The quality of football, we were all asking. Because all of a sudden, not until he came out with himself, we didn't know that it is because of injury that he, he relaxed and he was not having you know, playing time and other things. But you could see that he started coming up again. And even bef before this disaster, I learned he scored some beautiful goal. Yeah. You see how, how life is. So why should I have something like this? Which nobody has come up with it. We were not taught the, 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 the technical of agro football. We were just playing it. It was just coming. And it doesn't, it can't happen that way. So fortunately, I am coming with it. I want to do it practically. It's not theory. Practically how it is done. So that flair will come in, artistry will come in, creativity will come in, uh, 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 confidence will come in with this, all these skills, which I can imagine, you know, I, I've seen uh, Achu. He has all these things. Wow. He has all the quality. And that is why I say we, we have talents in the system. And if they are taught what I'm bringing up, you know, we will see a lot of Achus, Mohamed Polos, Apeti Peles, you mentioned them. Asians, Munta. You, we have them. We do have them in We do have them in abundance. But the direction, them. because those ones you know, are coming naturally, this one, it takes in time. It's taking time when we can't wait. That was an interesting prime take that took us down memory lane with Mohamed Polo. But today I want to take you down that same lane as I share with you my blunt thoughts. I've titled it 66 Years of Ghana's Independence, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. As we near our 66th independence anniversary, I feel there could be no better time for us to reflect on the path we have beaten, do some very candid introspection on where we have been and where we are and where we are headed and determine what we desire and aspire to and push for it now, not later. Some 66 years ago at the Polo Grounds, now the Kwame Nkrumah Mausoleum area, where the Osajifu declared Ghana's independence, he also uttered those famous words which we have all become used to, forward ever, backwards never, like that statue pointing forward. Ghana today, in Krumah's Ghana, has taken so many steps backwards that we cannot even count. It has become a typical case, a ritual of one step forward and many steps backwards. Take, for example, the many factories and completed projects in Krumah bequeathed to us. Juxtapose that with the fact that 60 plus years on, we cannot even follow his blueprint or legacy. 1v1f is a shambles. I said it. Prove me otherwise. Today, unlike in the First Republic, many, of our, many more of our projects are left uncompleted compared to those that are completed and stand the test of time. Just think of it. If Nkrumah 
had done that, like we are doing with some of our projects, if he had done that with the Akosombo Dam, with Valco, with the Tema Motorway, among others, can you imagine how much worse our lives would be today? Just think of it. Reflect. This is why, while I agree, there is some good we have achieved as a country, including the democratic system of governance we adopted for ourselves, especially in this Fourth Republic. We ought to, on a day like this, reflect on the gains and the boons we have derived from all these endeavors. Let's weigh them. How much have we gained? How much have we lost? The bad scenes of abundant projects, useless fighting between our two major political parties, and a lack of effectiveness and efficiency in planning and project delivery have been our bane and will continue so to be unless we twist the arms of our leaders and adopt some drastic measures concerning say. Consider the ugliness of the Galamse, uh, you know, menace and what we have allowed it to do to us, partly because of politicians' greed and a failure to create jobs. Recently, a bare-faced lie was told by this administration about the river and cobra being clean, green, when in fact, it was just the action of the sea pushing back polluted Galamse waters at a certain point around the estuary. In fact, that river is now beginning to even pollute the sea itself, with the sea beginning to turn a shade of brown around where the two water bodies meet. Why? What crime have Ghanaians committed to deserve such shambolic leadership? And even worse, we suffer such a paucity of ideas and leadership that now we need the Japanese to aid us clean our Galamse polluted waters? I'll be getting to that in my slides, but Ghana, hey, 66 years and this is what we're doing? I watched a video just a few days ago of the United Arab Emirates reclaiming desert land for wheat farming, which is how they built Dubai in the first place. In that video, that country has constructed from the desert wheat farms of thousands of hectares with a size of about 500 football fields. 500 football fields. C contemplate that. Just contemplate. Let's use the Babayara Sports Stadium. 500 times of that. They are reshaping wheat production and it is apt, especially considering what is happening between Russia and Ukraine. They found a niche and they are going for it. For us, our stupidity has left us where we are in the lurch and going back to the IMF for the 17th time running. People are doing things, using their heads. Why not us? When will we get there? Why can our leadership not be that ambitious? And if not now, when will we ever catch up with the rest of the world? When? Shall we condemn our future generations to mediocrity through our own inadequacies? Think about it, Ghana Fool. Aren't you tired? Aren't you tired of this, this false system we're running that does us no justice, that leaves us poorer administration in, administration out? Aren't you tired? You could be an aficionado of the MPP or the NDC, but think, think about Ghana. Think your life, 66 years on. If we were a human being, we would have retired if, if it were a man, because we have you know, women retiring at 55 in Ghana, men at 60. If, it, if Ghana were to be a man, he would have been on retirement for six years now. Is this, when you look at our infrastructure, when you look at Galamse and what is this doing to us, if those were health conditions, what kind of life would the person called Ghana be living? Before I go, let me reflect a little on some crucial areas of our national endeavor, including elections and Galamse, which I've started talking about. Come with me. And the economy as well, definitely. I put these two slides, which we shared a few days ago, together because it is uncharacteristic of politicians. I mean, I remember in 2019, um, the, the Netherlands um, um, ambassador to Ghana had some choice words for our country on the back of Ghana Beyond Aid. He said, we should look at Ghana beyond corruption. And I agreed with him. It is rare for diplomats to come out and say things like this. And so when they do, you should not take them for granted because it means certain discussions have been had, certain things are funneling through diplomatic circles. That is why I found it interesting on the back of our economic downturn when the German ambassador to Ghana, Daniel Kroll, said, the size of Ghana's government is much higher than in my country. 
a country that lends to us. There is room for improvement. That is what he said. Again, he said, I cannot go out to the international community saying I need help, but I am not willing to cut my own budget expenditure, which is exactly what we're doing. We're going pan in hand, begging, because yet look at how our executive is living large. Doesn't make any sense to you. It reminds me of a madman in Kumase back then. They said he would come on the streets and beg for a little bit of money to purchase sardines. Now, you would think that that wouldn't be his most uh, pertinent need, but that was what he would say. And many people refused to give him money because of that. We're in a similar situation. Mind-boggling. But I want us to look at the cost of our elections ahead of election 2024. Here's why. Look at Ghana in 2020. Our registered voters were 17 million. How much did it cost us? $131 million. Look at Nigeria. Now, 2023, a population of 93 million. How much did it cost them? $671 million. But when it's like this, you will not get the proper breakdown. So let's go to the next slide. If you look at our elections in 2020, it meant that the cost per voter, me going to vote, was $7.70. In Nigeria's election, currently, the cost per voter, $6.70. The Kenyans also have their own situation. Even worse, $16.60. But I'm asking myself, with a country that is smaller, with a smaller voter population, and this doesn't necessarily have to reflect like in publishing, where the more you publish, the lower the cost. In this instance, what can we do to save money? I'm pointing to stuff that I'm hoping the CDDs and other think tanks, Imani Africa and co, can push, even as I'm pushing it here, so that ahead of election 2024, we can get more value for money, the taxpayers' money. But that bit about Galamsey that I was talking about, it's so curious sometimes, I, with all the engineers and, and scientists and thinkers in this country, my heart bled when I saw this news article in the Ghanaian Times recently. Japanese team in Ghana to help clean Galamsey polluted rivers. Are we saying that after all these decades of Galamsey, we don't even have the expertise to deal with it? And a country like Japan, which is bleeding in terms of young people in the country, they are the ones to come and show us how to clean our waters. Experts arrive from Japan to begin work on Galamsey polluted rivers, and these rivers have high density of toxic mercury and dangerous uh, to health. The objective of the team is to make the rivers clean and hygienic again. Because the Ghana man cannot do it himself. He is bereft of ideas. I salute our leaders. They are such wonderful leaders. Again on Galamsey, look at the rivers that have been pointed to in recent times. The Prat, the Birim, the Ancobra, the Ofin, among others. Here's the interesting bit, because I spoke about the Ancobra and how the lie was peddled to us that it was clean, when in fact, it was as dirty as ever. The Minerals Commission has issued licenses to some mining companies close to water bodies. And this is where I also fault them, close to water bodies. Look at the company, Cape North Limited. That's the license number, application date, 22nd September 2022. The validity period, 17th January all the way to 16th January 2053. Guess where? The Ancobra. Close to a water body. And they granted the license. Unipower Mining Company Limited. License number, date in 2019, 9th May 2022 to 18th May 2032. River Tano entering into the Boyne uh, Tano Forest Reserve. Same. Unipower again, around the same time, but this time in 2022, it's the River Pra this time. Open job mining, and sometimes they have these interesting names. Open job mining, look at that. Application date validity period on the Offin. Bucks Gold on the Offin. K Kukum Ventures also on the Offin. We're gradually losing our country. If you've not realized it, you watching me right now, whether young or old, 
If you've not thought about it, we're gradually losing everything. Sometimes my heart, maybe because my, and today is my birthday, by the way, maybe because my special day is close to Independence Day, maybe that is why I, am, I bleed so much. Maybe that is why I'm so concerned. Because I sometimes wonder, 10 years from now, 15, 20, 25, 30, 50 years from now, what will our gold resources be like? What will our water bodies be like? Land resources, what will they be like? All the resources we have. And what will we be bequeathing? Nkrumah gave us so much to these very lying people who said that he had done nothing, broke down his effigies, burnt his books, made him look terrible. Yet, decades on, how much have these very people added on to us? At least in Kamunya Bibem Brosso, near who said, Oh, on a cry, they are one yashay, and a sumbo cry saying, You obey. But this is what we have. All his factories were abandoned, jettisoned. One D, one F. What has it given us? A handful. Let us reflect. It's high time we reflected because if we continue like this, we'll become a banana republic. And Ghana. Someday we'll be sold out again. We'll be colonized. Not in the terms of people coming here to attack us, invade, and take over like that colonization. No. The neocolonialism that the Osajifu spoke of will come full circle and bite all of us. All my friends are traveling to Australia, Canada, the United Kingdom, the United States. Professionals, doctors, accountants, engineers. You ask them and they ask Aben, what are you still doing in Ghana? Some of us want to be here because we want the country to be better. But will that ever happen? I cannot wish you a happy 66th independence anniversary. I don't know how much there is to be happy about. And I still insist that while we can celebrate in our own rooms and contemplate and ponder about Ghana, we don't need to expend more of the taxpayers' money on a futile celebration of Independence Day. Ghana for these are my blunt thoughts for you on another Friday morning. Served to you hot, raw, and edited, and undiluted. God richly bless Ghana and make her great and strong. Welcome back on the AM show. Today being a Friday, well, we're also going to be contemplating what former President John Mahama has hinted at in terms of the approach his administration will adopt in dealing with corruption in Ghana. The former president has placed the fight against graft high on his agenda in the build-up to the 2024 election. Speaking during the launch of his flag bearership campaign for the NDC, Mr. Mahama said, he had his eyes set on dubious activities, he said, were being perpetrated by the ruling government. Well, this morning, to dilate on those matters, we have Member of Parliament on the ticket of the National Democratic Congress, Dr. Clement Apak, on the show this morning. Doc, a very good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, let me say it's uh, a pleasure to be here. It's been quite a while. It has. I remember the last time. I thought you I had came. abandoned us. No, 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 <laughs> certainly not. Uh, as you know, we went on recess, and as is expected, I had to spend a good deal of time with uh, my constituents, listening to them, appreciating the issues, and planning how I would advocate them. And since we came back, we've been very busy in Parliament. And as astute as you are, I know you've been following the developments. So it's a, it's a pleasure to be here. And I agree to all the viewers, particularly my constituents of, of uh, Bulsa South. So, Bulsa Mapusi. You know, you know my, my constituency party mm. has made the decision to let me contest for the 2020 yeah. election yeah. unopposed. So, I currently have no competitor 
in, in the in the primary. So obviously, I, I thank. You mean 2024? Yes. 2024. Yes, I'll be I'll be I'll become I am by default the candidate of the NDC. So I've already, if you if you like, I've gotten a, a free pass, mm. which is exciting. That so that, I'm sure that, gratitude. That says a lot about the confidence the people have in you, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And, and I don't, but, but, I don't but, but take how, it for granted. How did they come by this decision? Because I know in your constituency, obviously, there would be, even among those who are supporters, aficionados of your party, there would be those who also feel, well, you've been there, you've done that. Maybe Doc has not been able to deliver as much. I've, I've heard people also rail against you. So by, by what constituency? Did, did they arrive at this decision? How was it done? Well, you know the way the processes work. The mm -hmm. first phase is determined by only members of the party. And uh, given my, my record, um, I believe that I had done sufficiently well to merit uh, their decision not to encourage somebody else to contest. It's not as though, you know, there are no prospects yeah. or uh, we don't have persons in the party from our constituency who, who, can, who, can, take who, the slot. who, who can do the work. Mm. Uh, but both those who can do it and those who are the kingmakers have all connived, so to speak, in deciding that I should go again unopposed. And this is not the first time. In fact, the previous election mm. as well, I was the sole candidate. I didn't when have to contest. When was 2020? Yeah, 2020? in preparation for the 2020 election. Right. I, I went on oppose. And in preparation for the 2024, I am going on oppose. I am not going to say that I've been able to do all the things that I want to do or the people expect me to do. But at least they know I've honestly and genuinely done my best under very difficult circumstances. And so I'm not perfect like any other human being. But I think they have weighed the options and they have decided that I've done sufficiently well to merit this honor than me. And I don't take it for granted. So I am not surprised. Of course, some will rail against me, but they still think that I should be their de facto candidate for the coming election. And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful. Uh, when you look at that constituency, having served them in the past and looking forward to serving them in the future. I, I, I know we're going to be talking about the former president and his uh, Yes, that's and correct. All of that. But whenever I have someone come here who represents a constituency, I like to push them for them to tell all of Ghana what they have done in the past, what they hope to do, what is wrong, what has been done right, and basically how we can do more for the people. So over to you. Uh, in a nutshell, what would you say, especially as we approach Independence Day? That's, yes. I mean, you see, uh, my is a rural constituency, uh, largely agrarian. So farming is the main economic activity. Mm. Uh, in spite of the mantra and sing song about, you know, one district, one factory, uh, Bulsa South doesn't have a factory. Uh, we have one, but it is uh, privately owned in, in rice processing. So my main focus has always been in the area of education and healthcare. Uh, and of course, the empowerment of the youth and, and women. But the issues that affect most of the country uh, are not unpresent in, in Bulsa South. So we talk about uh, challenges to so do the with, same uh, challenges with, you with, face with as well. road networks, in, inadequate health facilities, uh, inadequate educational facilities. And, and if, if, if you like, uh, the, the, the sheer lack of opportunities for, for, for young men and women. Uh, mm. But I focus a lot more on education and healthcare, mm. largely because I believe that if you have an educated, healthy population, at least that then serves as the foundation for them to also be able to thrive and explore their God-given potential. So I, I, I renovate schools. Uh, I have built new schools as we are speaking. There is a, a, a KG block that it's uh, almost completed at one of my communities uh, known as uh, uh, Zuasa in, uh, in Bulsa South. Yes. And then, you know, the issue of furniture deficits, I uh, procure. Oh, yes, yes, yes. But, but you I, know I love me. it when. You, you, you know me. The, the, the I, 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 I am a vandal. So I am a vandal. We'll, our, we'll motto, our motto is true stance. Well, you, you know I'm an old vandal too. Uh, very well. Okay. So, so uh, you know the way we are. It, we don't say things that we have not done. And when we are wrong, we admit.
Mm. So I know I've fallen short. Perhaps I could have done a lot more, but uh, given the circumstances and the conditions and, and, and the nature of our politics, where when you belong to the ruling party, you tend to get a lot more of your, you know, your request fulfilled compared to when you are not. And indeed, the, 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 the lack of fluidity in the disbursement of the, of the common fund, these, these are challenges. But I'm doing well in terms of helping youth uh, get employment, some getting recruited into you know, services and, and, and teaching, helping women groups with uh, soft loans. I'm going to be disbursing uh, some 40,000 uh, when, when I go. This should have been done earlier. But the <laughs> district director of Agric, who was supposed to have done that on my behalf through my social intervention fund, misapplied the funds. And later on, I heard that he had passed on. So I now have to look for my own private resources uh, to deal with that. Uh, and then we are, we are drilling boreholes. We continue to repair a number of them because water is, is life. Uh, I've just spent some 54,800 of my own personal resources fixing 28 boreholes. And I'm going to be drilling an, another 10. So I continue to, to, to do my, my best under the, the circumstances. And I believe that the, the people appreciate, they appreciate the effort, knowing the general predicament of, of the nation and the challenges thereof. So tell me, uh, your common fund, for example, you speak about how late it tends to come. Do you think we should legislate on that, maybe in a way, as a member of parliament, so that we can stem the tide of, oh, you're not in power, so we're going to constrain you in certain ways, like we've heard your, your membership in parliament complain about from time to time? Well, in terms of the common fund, I must say that it is not a challenge just for those of us in opposition. It is a challenge for every member of parliament. And it's I think, a general challenge, but I'm hinging my question on the fact that you said, especially when it comes to developmental issues, those in the majority likely would get more attention. No, no, that is based on lob lobbying. This has okay. nothing to do with the Common Fund. Okay. Because as a member of parliament, uh, clearly by the constitution, we are not technically agents of development. That is supposed to be done and that's a by central way. government and indeed the district assembly. So, in fact, if we got it right, and I think that we have to work assiduously towards that. The assemblies should be the, the noodles of development in the districts. But in the way that our system has evolved since the inception of the, of the Fourth Republic, uh, and the, 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 the very entrenched levels of poverty that we have, tends to make the member of parliament an agent of development. And so what that also means is that you must go outside of your remit to try and see what other avenues you can explore, yeah. what doors you can knock on to try and get what some of want, the needs of you your, need people your people mm. addressed. So in that, in that context, clearly, if you are a vociferous opponent of the ruling government, you and I can appreciate how government officials will be adamant in helping you because they see you as somebody who is always on their neck, so to speak. So if, for example, I were to put in a request for a road to be fixed in my constituency as Clementa Park, uh, a deputy ranking member of the Committee of Education, and my chair of the education committee, who is a member of the ruling party, guess what? Although my situation may be dire by default, the likelihood that the chair of the committee, who is a member of the ruling party, would get his request granted versus mine is very high. So, so that's the point I so am So those are some of the dynamics make. in there. Yes. Let, let, let's take a look at this issue before we move on, lest I forget. I, I, though it's not in your constituency, it's close. A 93-year-old hospital facility in the Wilson North uh, constituency, that district as well. And... I read a story about it recently, 93 years old, I think it saw a facelift in 1970, then again in 1992, which, which tells you that if it's 93, it must have been constructed around 1930, okay? And it's, it's in a shambles, dilapidated. The structure is basically falling apart. What, what killed me was the fact that recently at the children's ward, guess what they found there? What? A snake. 
Well, so so how, how does that wash on you, especially as we're approaching independence? No, no, it's, 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 and, it's, and do you it's, have any such situations in your constituency? Just to with that, we'll wrap on. You yes, yes, I agree. I, I think that it is it is depressing. It is depressing to know that this is the situation, and I don't doubt because you know, Bulsan North, Bulsan South, you know, we we share a common boundary, we share a common culture. We share a common language. Not long ago, we were one district with two constituencies. I myself have been a patient at the hospital in Sandema. I have I gone there to visit patients. Because I attended Sandema Secondary Technical School. Mm. And on a number of occasions where I've had very acute malaria, I had been admitted there in my days as, as a student. And I visited. Uh, relatives there, I uh, visited constituents there, because Bulsa South, we have a healthcare center. Ours ha has not been elevated to the status of a district hospital. And it is true that indeed, not a lot has been done to maintain the facility and, and to give it the, the, the status that it, it deserves. So I am not surprised. But, but clearly this again brings to the fore where central government has failed. Because clearly, that is not the responsibility of a member of parliament. And I dare say that that is even beyond the capacity of a district assembly. This ought to be a problem that we must place squarely and the blame squarely at the doorstep of government, and in particular, the Ministry of Health. How is it the case that we can have a district hospital that has not seen any improvement, any facelift over the years, mm. to the extent that it is now becoming the, the, the abode of reptiles. It clearly unconscionable. It is an embarrassment. Look, let's not mince words. As we are going to celebrate independence, as you rightly said, after how many years of being independent, and these are the stories that we still have to tell, it means that we have not done well. Mm. So collectively, as a nation, we have a lot more to do. Right. As I said earlier, for Bootsa South, we are now getting to the stage where our healthcare center is going to be elevated to a district level. And I've been doing my best to support healthcare delivery, procuring mattresses and uh, other facilities to support the establishment of uh, a theater. And I can say that we have now, over time, been able to establish a theater. And for the first time, some surgeries were, were performed in, in the Fumbisi uh, healthcare center, and I continue to, to support them. If Dr. Freeman is listening, he will, he will bear me out. He's the district director of, uh, of health in, in Bulsa South. So I continue to do my best, but a lot more need, needs to be done. A All lot right. more needs to be done. Let, let me, I like reflecting on thoughts from different angles, and uh, even if someone shares a thought that is not technically right, I'll share it in the first place. Before we move on to Mahama, uh, James Kweku Bofa is watching us live. He says, Throughout this week, the host and panelists have been members of the opposition, Kwachio Fosu, Mutala Mohammed, Dr. Pak. Why? Uh, so you obviously don't even have your facts right, but I'll, I'll still be patient with you. Kwachio Fosu was not on my show. Mutala Mohammed was not on my show. He may have been on this network. He was not on my show. And let me just tell you something. Uh, what some of you do not know. I, and yesterday, I believe it was yesterday, that's why I had to issue a disclaimer. We had a conversation. We invited Al Hassan Suini, Member of Parliament for Tamale North, and we invited members of the MPP. We went through the communications process. They did not give us anyone, whether they were dragging their feet, unwilling to come, unafraid to be pinned to the wall. Uh, but you throw the invitation. That is how it is done from both sides. If people don't come, there is nothing you can do. So uh, what's the gentleman's name? James Boffa. Get your facts right before you start making allegations that uh, you cannot substantiate. In any case, when we had the likes of uh, Kwabene Japong and all the other MPP stalwarts, Kwabene J. Japong was on my show just a short while ago. Uh, we always interact with the likes of Kojo Poku, who is vying for the flag bearership. Uh, your own communications person, Richard Ayangba, always comes on the show. I don't see you complaining. So let's be honest and let's be fair. 
especially when you don't even have the facts. I'll be patient with you like that. Anyway, let's continue with that conversation. Um, so former President Mahama has launched his campaign, Mahama Ebo, Mahama Ebo, Mahama Aba. Sanity. But some keep asking, old Mahama, is there a new Mahama? Why would Mahama even want to put himself forward? Some people have said, suggested, that if it weren't for the abysmal performance of the MPP, Mahama would have no business even trying to go for the presidency again. Let's start the conversation from there. How do you react to that? Well, first of all, let me appreciate you and, and the network for giving me this uh, opportunity uh, to appear and also to speak in justification of, of why uh, His Excellency President John Ramani Mahama the former president uh, has decided to take another shot at becoming the president of the Republic of Ghana. Uh, we all witnessed, either in person or through the magic of uh, audiovisuals, the launch yesterday in, in, in the Volta region. And I must say that the premise that you just put before me uh, to some extent, uh, is justified. I am not making a reference to those who are questioning why he is coming. But I am making a reference to the fact that uh, the current Nanadu baumia led MPP government has really messed up in ways and manners that nobody could have anticipated. The current level of distress in the country, the high level of despondency and the loss of hope by Ghanaians, largely due to the recklessness of the Akufadu baumia led government in the areas of the dissipation of public resources, reckless borrowing, and indeed sheer economic mismanagement, have indeed combined and conspired to make the return of John Ramani Mahama a good move. And I say so not because John Mahama is deficient, mm. not because he doesn't deserve on his own to have made another attempt as he's making to come back. But if you listen to him very carefully uh, during the, the, the speech, which I described as phenomenal and pace setting, at uh, the campaign launch yesterday, he made it very clear that having the benefit of hindsight and having the benefit of experience, sitting back, listening, watching, advising, advocating, have combined to allow him to appreciate the severity of the challenge that Ghana faces, mm. which is unsurpassed in the history of the Republic, and in particular, within the parameters of the, of the Fourth Republic. And look, it is obvious, you don't need to be a rocket scientist. This does not even require you to be a critical mind or analyst to appreciate the situation that we are grappling with. Just look at our debt to GDP. When a government, then in opposition, comes and makes proposals, mouth-watering proposals, promises heaven and earth, and then that group is giving the power to govern. And you come and take a debt, a national debt, at 122 billion, and you balloon it to about 500 billion, mm. and you have nothing significant to show for it. Clearly, you cannot expect the people to think that that is okay. I mean, look at inflation. As we speak now, consecutively, inflation is said to be around 54%. We hear it has dropped. But we all know that this is the highest level of inflation that we have ever had. 
is the should highest I, should I, in, should in, I, in some decades. Is the highest I mean, as year. far as we know. Right. Should, should we speak about the, the strength of the, of, of the Ghanaian currency vis-a-vis -vis other foreign currencies? Mm. Where we are in terms of, of the city, and we want I mean, to talk about. I mean, the last I checked, even we, in, we, we were slumping again, and um, the Lebanese pound was the only one that was worse than our currency. But it, it's not it's not as volatile as it was last year, is it? Well, yes. I mean, we are all happy if there are improvements. I remember His Excellency said yesterday that he is not one who likes to revel in the feelings of a government simply because they are his political openness. And I think that is very profound. That is the mark of somebody who truly has the heart of a statesman. In fact, he said that- The if, heart of a statesman. He would have wanted this administration to perform well. That is it. Whether, whether that is true or not. No, it is because it, it is collective. As, as we sit now, I mean, we are all suffering. The cost of living is gone up. When you go to the market to procure food items, they don't give you a different price because you belong to the new patriotic party or the PNC or the NDC. When the roads are bad as they are and you are driving, your vehicle is not given a free pass in terms of, you know, its ability to survive over a long period of time. You heard recently that we are even having a shortage of critical vaccines. Those children who are being born, who would not get those vaccines that they need to be able to survive, are not... MPP or NDC. These are Ghanaians. Our wars are in school. You and I have talked about this severally. When you owe capitation grants in excess of 45 million, and yet you only approve and allocate 11 million, when the request for the year in question is 61 million, it's our wars who suffer in the public schools. So when you look at what is, is going on in the Republic of Ghana, and you consider the experience that John Raman Imama has acquired, and you consider the fact that he has been out of office and he has had time to appreciate the issues, and you think about the fact that he has not been an armchair observer, time without number, he has proffered and suggested solutions, including admonishing and calling on this government to have gone to the IMF much earlier, walking upright, and not having to wait and to go there in a wheelchair. Where today, we are now begging, literally begging the Chinese, begging them, asking the Germans to intercede with the Chinese on our behalf so that they can put in a good word for us to get a bailout from the IMF that this government swore, fatwa, waving spears, never to, to go to. So yes, he may have had his time before, but the conditions and the circumstances that we face now require an experienced hand, somebody who has had time to sit back, reflect, do introspection, analyze the issues. And as he said, I mean, people have been calling on him, myself included. I am one of many mm. who has been calling on him and calling on him, as have many Ghanaians, for him to come back. So that at least, as he said, we can build the Ghana that we want. We can fix this country and we can repair Ghana and put it on the path of prosperity. And I think that it is, it is a good call. I am glad, as are many Ghanaians, that he has responded to the call. Mm. Let, let's talk about the fight against graft. He's made it one of his chief you know, campaign uh, areas, if you like. And, and corruption is one of those uh, things that were used to hang him, corruption. Uh, in the Daily Guide today, he says, no family, friends, government again. Uh, that's a quote, they say the new Mahama. Those were some of the very things that were used against him when he was president of the land. What exactly does the, the former president mean when he suggests that he's going to tackle corruption? I mean, you look at the indices and, well, not much has changed since that time in terms of the corruption perception index. We saw the Afrobarometer report, which pointed to not perception, but real corruption figures out there. This was just last year. But what, what is the former president going to do should he be given the nod in fighting corruption? Well, look, let's be honest. And I am not going to say what I'm about to say because I'm NDC or because I had the privilege of serving in government and serving President John Damani Mama as uh, one of his presidential staffers. In fact, 
I was a deputy policy coordinator at the presidency uh, in charge of operations. And I was part of the policy delivery uh, unit. I know that when it comes to the record of fighting corruption in the history of the Fourth Republic, clearly, the Mills Mama administration and the Mama Emisata administration stands tall because I was there. And it was part of my responsibility working with the late Daniel Batterdam. We were in charge of the portfolio that had to do with good governance and the fight against corruption. So I know what I am talking about. And I can give you several examples. I can give you examples where, for the first time in a long time, a sitting president, a government, had to superintend and supervise over the prosecution of government appointees I mean, based the, on allegations of corruption. The, 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 the you, name you that comes to mind, apart from all the claims that are made, Abu Ghapeli. That is only one. You also remember the investigation that was conducted. In fact, at the, at the instance of His Excellency John Damane Mama, international service, which uncovered a lot of rot and graft that was going on, mm. and people were prosecuted. Mm. There are many other examples that I can cite. And you Sh see, share, share some more of them with us, because I'm sure ordinary Ghanaians would also be saying, look, many more examples. You've spoken of Abu Gapile, you've spoken of the National Service Secretariat. If people are going to take the former president seriously, <laughs> some work must be shown from the past. Yes. And what can be done in the present? So, so, are there so, any others you can So, I've just about? given you two examples for now, mm. right? Compare that to this current government and president. Tell me one, one alleged act of corruption that has been investigated, where sitting government appointees have been held accountable. But yet the there, allegations. There have been exposés, there have been investigations. Well, by People who? People have been cleared. Well, that is the problem. When you have a president who has a penchant to clear his appointees who are alleged to have been engaged in acts of corruption or who are being investigated for acts of corruption, he is, in fact, enhancing corruption. But it is and not, not fighting corruption. Look, it, it don't, has, don't it take it from been, me. It, it has never been, just to clarify, you say what, when you have a president who has the penchant for clearing, it has never been the president himself clearing these people. It has no, but he, been, has, he has made the announcement. It has never been shrugged I can, the, the, the investigative... Which, which, know, which, which of them? The which which, which, which of them? And others. Which, which of them? I mean, we all know... The, should I cite Charles Bissou? Should I Ch cite Charles, Charles Bissou? The, the PPA you, you boss. Know, you know, I mean, you know, there, there have been the PPA boss is still yes, standing trial. Yes, but at a point in time, his assets were unfrozen and all of that. Yeah, so why were I his assets say, unfrozen? Just, well, it was a judicial process. In fact, when it in fact... with the law. When in fact... If, it was if, a technicality. If that is it. Was a, a technicality which was exploited. That, that, does that mean that the, the resources that were found is, in his account, as per the Commission for Human Rights and Administrative Justice report, mm. And he was asked to refund those monies. Mm. How did he get those, those monies? You are talking about Charles Bissou. You know that as we are speaking. <laughs> the the Anas expose, which brought about that issue. You saw the way it was done. In fact, I can tell you that Anas and his tiger eye, and most Ghanaians are not satisfied with the way this matter was handled. We all know the way that this matter could have been handled to ensure that those who were found culpable were held accountable. But look at the way it was done, just to give room for the issue to become a non-issue. And don't take it from me. Take it from my own uncle, the citizen vigilante, Martin Amidu, mm. who was the first special prosecutor ever, and indeed appointed by the current government. Mm. If you read most of his writings, even before he left office, one of the reasons that precipitated his decision to quit was that government appointees and officials, and in fact, at some point, he made direct references to the president and the presidency, were putting impediments in his way, not allowing him to do his work. He will request information, and he will not be given. Do you even want me to talk about how shabbily he was treated in terms of his request for manpower, in terms of investigators and prosecutors at his office? 
How did Martin Amiru describe the president? He has named him the mother serpent of corruption. So it is very clear that Akufuado Baumia MPP government never really meant to fight corruption. They have not fought corruption and they cannot fight corruption. In fact, corruption has become a social intervention policy under the Akufuado Baumia government. Because they do it and they walk, walk away free. Mm. Look at the issues of Galamse. Your party chairman in the Ashanti region is implicated. The visuals are there. The evidence is there. Not only does he walk, but the president actually pronounces a verdict indicating that Akunta mining was not culpable. The, the and this is a matter that is even yet to be investigated. And others came to put it into context that when the president said it, he said, as of now. Really? The person is not involved. So is it the information minister? He was saying at the who, time who that as to... of that time he was speaking, I think it was a military event that the, the, the Ashanti regional chairperson of the MPP look, was look, not involved look. in Galamsi. To post, say, post to facto say, rationalization to say, to say cannot, that cannot be accepted. Whatever was going on was not going on at that time. It wasn't extant. Was that wrong? Post facto rationalization. The, let's, pres let's, the, president, let's... the president knows what he sees. Right. Let's, let's look at... Again, I want to go back to this because I want us to get this clearly. I'm sure the people watching us, uh, very discerning viewers, they are asking themselves still, you talk about some examples in the past, very few that you can talk about in terms of the fight against corruption from the NDC, and maybe nothing to show from the MPP like you painted. But in terms of tackling corruption, what is the former president technically, clearly? How is he going to fight this? I'll point you back to what the current president said, and why people have become very, what's the word? It's, it's, it's almost as though people have become inured to all this talk. When you say, we want to see a lot more, we want to hear practically how you're going to do this. Do you remember when the current president said he would apply the ANAS principle. principle? Yes, I, I remember very clearly. The ANAS uh, principle, and, and, and I do not know where it is now, but those are some of the reasons ordinary Ghanaians, when you say I'm going to fight drafts now, they want to see palpably, how are you going to do it? What are you going to do? Which institutions are you going to set up? Peter Obi in Nigeria said he would set up a special prosecutor's you know, office and all of that. How is Mahama going to do it? Well, you see, Mahama has a record, as I said. And he is also one who allows state institutions to function without interference. And if you are to fight corruption, that is very important. When you have a situation where an executive president or the executive does everything possible to influence the workings of state institutions, clearly you cannot fight corruption. And the example of the special prosecutor's office, as I cited earlier, is one that you should be taking into account. Why do you set up the office of a special prosecutor? And then you then put impediments in the way of the special prosecutor when he tries to do his work. Look, don't even go far. We now have a new special prosecutor. I am sure you heard of the allegations to do with a certain member of the Council of State who clearly benefited from not paying taxes by virtue of her influence. That discourse led to a commissioner of customs having to be relieved of his position. The special prosecutor came out very forcefully in taking on this issue. How far have we gone with that? So you have a government that is not willing to support even institutions that it has brought into being to do the work for which it promised us it was going to bring those institutions into being. And look, we, we see it all the time. Why do you think the president has also been nicknamed the declaring agent? And so pro former President Mahama would do things differently? He would let I, the I, state institutions, he would let this. John Mahama even said it yesterday. And I know those of us who have worked with him, we know mm. that he means what he says. He does not interfere with the work of state and public institutions. Right. He allows them to do their work. 
And if you are to fight corruption, that is what you ought to do. Mm. Allow the CID to do its work. It shouldn't matter which government official has been accused or alleged to have, to have engaged in acts of corruption. Allow the special prosecutor to do his work. Mm. It shouldn't matter whether the complaint has been filed against a sitting member of the Council of State who is known to be a financier uh, of, 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 your, of your party. Allow the, uh, the BNI, now NIB, to do its work when there are allegations of corruption in the computerized school placement system. You don't, you don't allow your Minister for National Security to write to the Ministry of Education to set up an internal committee to investigate when the BNI and the, the CID have been petitioned by the Director General of the Ghana Education Service. So President Mahama would allow the institutions to work. And if we can allow state and public institutions to do their work without the political interference, particularly by the executive, then we would be making a headway. One of the reasons why we have not seen much in the fight against corruption, as far as the Akufuado Baumia MPP government is concerned, is because of the deliberate effort that is made to interfere with the workings of state and public institutions. Let, let, and look, let me let, say this. Let, let me, me say this. I am very saddened. I am very saddened. And I must say this and be blunt. In my own opinion, and what I've read and what I know from other jurisdictions, and even within the context of Ghana's history, public and state institutions under the Akufuado Baumia MPP led government have been largely compromised. They are not doing the bidding of the people of Ghana. They are there to do the bidding of the MPP Akufuado Baumia. How is it that a former commissioner of the Electoral Commission will lose her job? over procurement breaches. And yet, her replacement, a current commissioner of the Electoral Commission, has also committed the same sin, and yet is in office. Are you suggesting very quickly that should the NDC come back to power, that same stick is going to be used to hit Jean Mensah? Should the NDC come to power? Are you going to use well, the same stick? Well, I am power? saying that no, I mean, you've when, when John Draman and Mama comes, it, as if, he if has it said. If it's bad for the, the, the goose, then it must be bad for the gander. We are asking for equity. We are asking for fairness. We are asking that the rules ought to be applied fairly, regardless of who. So, this so, tendency so, so technically the rules of be selective, to Mensah of as well. selective if justice. Is found to have, of, of course, you know, if there are procurement breach, breaches, breaches, she should be held accountable. Why is it okay for Charlotte Osei to be held accountable for procurement breaches? And yet it is different or not okay for Jean Mensah to be held for procurement. So in tackling corruption, in tackling graft, in tackling the problems in the system, it means technically what you're saying is that should your party come to power, you're going to probe those issues and Jean Mensah's head would roll. That's what you're saying. I say, I say that, yes, if there are offenses, they will be probed. I remember the, 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 the John Mahama said that yesterday. He said that when he comes, he is going to investigate public expenditure. Mm. He made specific references to the recently released Auditor General's report on the COVID-19 expenditure. And are you not baffled? Mm. I mean, are you not shocked that a president who came into our homes every week during the pandemic to give us updates has been silent, stone cold in commenting even in person, not even on a Twitter handle, about the Auditor General's report on COVID expenditure, and perhaps even to take a cue from what the President of Malawi has done to signal, to signal and indicate to the people of Ghana that I will punish wrongdoing and I will hold my own appointees who have misappropriated, embezzled, misapplied resources that came into the public coffers to fight this pandemic. Are you not surprised that the president has chosen to go stone cold on this? Let, let, let's, let's, let's stay on that, but from a different angle. He says, you know, in tandem, that 
he is going to probe dubious activities by the current government. Now, I don't have a problem with that, whether the MPP is probing the NDC for wrongdoing or the NDC is probing the MPP for wrongdoing. If it is wrong, it is wrong. I mean, my mind goes back to Comenda, the sugar factory. That's Just correct. this morning, I was talking about it with my colleague Samuel Kojobrace. And you look at it and the sums of money we've pumped into it time and again, what value is the ordinary Ghanaian getting? Nothing. Your administration could not get it done. This administration has not got it done. Last year, Alan Chabating, who is now gunning to be flag bearer of the MPP, gave us the assurance it would be up, working, rolling, nothing to show. It's a rust bucket. Why do I bring it up in terms of dubious <laughs> activities and corrupt practices? Look at Saglimi. The point has been made that there were so many, um, not infractions, but things that were done that were contrary to law in, in, in the funding, in the payments, and all of that. And so it is sitting there rotting. How are you going to ensure that in, in pursuing what ought to be pursued, legally speaking, whether it's a project or whatever, you don't leave us with so many more of these like we are seeing with some of the projects that have been abandoned? That is the angle I'm taking. Well, I, 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 I agree and I appreciate you know, the point you are driving at. And I can tell you that the NDC has a record. President Mama has a record. He has always believed that governance is a continuum. And once you invest public resources, it is the responsibility of your successor government to make sure that those public resources don't go to waste. And you see, I beg to differ to some extent with the issue of the Commander Sugar Factory. We did what we did, and we set it up to take off. Unfortunately, we lost power. It was our, our expectation, as was the expectation of many Ghanaians, that the current government would have taken it up from there, but they did not. And so, even if we perhaps were not able to achieve our goal as we set out to do, we worked assiduously. And if they had continued, I believe by now, it would have been serving the purpose for which we put the investment in for the benefit of, of, of the people. You know, sugar is, is one of the commodities that we import in huge quantities. Spending good, hard-earned dollars to import. It wasn't just only going to reduce our reliance on importing sugar, but the levels of employment opportunities that it would have created certainly would, would, have, would have reduced the current levels of unemployment that we face in the country. You made references to secular men. Does it make sense that the housing project, that by and large, even looking at the visuals, was somewhere 90 and above complete, can just be left to rot? And we even know that there have been deliberate attempts to run it down so as to make it cheap to be sold off to private developers whom we know are affiliated to the current government. And it is not just in, in, in those two areas. There are many, many other areas that when we come, we are going to indeed take a comb, a fine comb, and comb through one village, one dam. Colossal amounts of money were invested. I come from the northern part of Ghana. Bulsa South is supposed to be a beneficiary of 10 dams. If you go there now and you ask that they should point you to where the 10 dams were constructed, many of us cannot, even me, the MP. Mm. I have not even seen three, let, to, let alone to talk of 10, but people have been paid for that. So there is a lot that has gone on in the past six to seven years that clearly has resulted in public resources being misused or being channeled and so you're in, promising into private here, pockets. You're stating here on behalf of the former president that should he get the nod of Ghanaians, this case of an albatross around Ghana's neck in terms of abandoned projects, I've always said that even if there are criminal you know, liabilities in there, go along with the process, but let the people benefit from Whatever that is exactly the philosophy. You're, you're sitting here stating on behalf of the president that that is the way he is going to go. 
Yes, because, he gets the because your mama has always believed that public resources ought to be put to public use, and governance is a continuum. And indeed, the Constitution admonishes that you ought to continue with public projects mm. when you take over. That is what the Constitution admonishes us to do. Look at the issue of the e-blocks. And as a member of the Education Committee, mm. uh, my side of the committee, not long ago, I think sometime last year, as you remember, we did a tour. We visited about four regions to see some of these schools. Some of them 80% complete, 90% complete. You remember the one famous one that we visited in the, in the Volta region, where it was 99% complete, only a few fixtures, and it had been abandoned. Mm. It was only when we had visited that facility and in our, our engagement with, with the chief, where the chief challenged government. And you remember the comment that the president made right. in response. Yes. That is the type of attitude that we are talking about. But and point, this point. is what Ghanaians can expect not to be done by John Dramani Mahama or his appointees. Uh, I, I want to look all of you in the eye, ordinary Ghanaians. You are listening to Dr. Clement Tapak, uh, member of parliament for Bwilsa South. And this is what he's saying. I always like it when the, the, the you know, politicians say this because we'll get footage to hold you to. I know. When? And I'll be here. The time comes. And to, re if to respond. You don't live up to expectation. Now, the economy, it has always been crucial in terms of how Ghanaians have voted. And uh, he speaks of the economic disaster, which could have been averted because we simply went a certain way that we should not have gone. This administration has blamed COVID-19 and the Russo-Ukrainian war. President Mahama, during his time, did not have it easy either. Yes. The economy was not rosy. The GDP factor, I think it's only in 2014 that we had that exceptional performance. All through, we had problems, even with oil GDP. Uh, we had Dumso and many other problems that bedeviled the ordinary Ghanaian. That also impacted the economy. What is John Dramani Mahama going to do so differently that will be better than the solid team the Vice President told us about? Do you remember? Uh, do we really have a solid team? Do we even have a team? Well, my, you see, uh, I, I, I'm premising it on this. No, 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 if, I, I get it. I'm going to be sarcastic. If, if, this is what we're getting on the back of a solid team. I don't know what we would get with a team that maybe is liquid. Well, but that, that, that should tell you that the definition of solid is relative. And, and don't be surprised because for a government in a group that would define review as council, don't be surprised that solid would mean liquid. So as uh, one of my young colleagues, uh, you know, lawyer Beatrice Annan has said, uh, it, is, it is a liquid economic team. In fact. Uh, the economic team doesn't even exist. Uh, and you have heard the blame, the blame game. Uh, some of their potential flag bearer aspirants, Alan Chermantin is uh, saying that uh, Baumia is uh, the, the, the leader of the economic management team. Baumia's people, like uh, Arnaud Dompre, is saying that it is Alan who was the, the head of the economic management team. So essentially, there has never been a team. Because if it was there, we shouldn't be in a predicament. Look, you spoke about Dumso. Yes, there were challenges, but John Mama made the bold step, and I remember very vividly when he addressed the state of the nation that he will fix it, and indeed he fixed it. Before we left office, Dumso was fixed. In fact, the current vice president on your own network, not this program, on your own network, made allusions to the effect that John Mama and the NDC should not expect to be applauded to be praised for solving a problem that we had caused. The video is there. But you were right, we faced challenges. And when we faced challenges, what did we do? Our challenges were precipitated by exogenous factors. You know at the time, the global prices of our major exports had plummeted. Gold, cocoa, and even oil had plummeted. And that was when John Damani Mama made the wise decision 
to convene a national stakeholders forum on the economy at Senchi, where we developed the homegrown policy, which was then taken to the same IMF that our counterparts swore never to go. And that gave us a reprieve. And look, make no mistake, the foundation and the work, hard as it was, and politically disadvantageous as it was, what was done was what laid the foundation for the growth that we saw in 2017 and 2018. 2017 and 2018, the growth that we witnessed in Ghana was not as a result of any superior policy programs implemented by the current government. Right. Because these were all predicted. But the point I want to make is this. When he comes back, he has already assured us that there's going to be real and tangible investments in the area of agri. They keep talking about planning for food and jobs. He had, he had that opportunity before. He was doing it. How far has it gone since he left? If you look at the records, fertilizer for planning for food and jobs were being smuggled mm. in huge quantities across the borders to Burkina Faso at a time when our border, borders were supposed to be closed. Doesn't that tell you a story that there were internal, high-level connivers who were, who were behind that? Dr. So Abad. yes, the economy mm. continues to be a challenge. But if we look at the dollar at the time that the NDC was in power, the level of inflation, the level of national borrowing, and the major indices, but these are all factors. At the very uh, minimum, admittedly, these are all factors that before uh, the Russo-Ukrainian war, especially, you know, look, were look, not where look. they were. You see, I didn't no, want to. I didn't want to go there because look, that, that is these, a reality, these are it? the most baseless mm. justifications that one can ever conjure. Russia and Ukraine war, COVID-19, peripheral. COVID-19 brought to this government an extra 10 billion Ghana cities mm. that the government would never have had. Some you, 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 have, you have seen the Auditor General's report. Mm. What those monies were, were, were being used for. Are you happy with that? Let's, let's wrap the Russia conversation. Russia and Ukraine war. Let's wrap the conversation. We have Do we import wrap. salt from Russia or Ukraine? <laughs> Let's, let's if you look at, no, let me finish. On, if you look at the table mm. of the first 10 countries that do business with Russia and Ukraine and import, Ghana is nowhere to be featured. So how do you blame? Why? Did the COVID jump over Burkina Faso and Togo, Ivory Coast, and suddenly land in Ghana? You're, you're, Are we the only country that is impacted by the Russian Ukraine you're war? You're speaking in the words of uh, Vice President Baumia. Well, you're, you're using the same. Yes, country. yes. It could come back to bite you. No, know, because we know yeah, that the excuses that we had were legitimate and genuine. Right. The excuses that they have are concocted. In, in a minute, I just want you to address some lines from uh, former President Mahama. He says, Of course, I know how to do it because I've had time, I've been there. I've had time out of office to reflect and all of that. Merely staying away will not make you better. But he says he's had time to reflect. Basically, he's learned lessons. Uh, what lessons has he learned? Then again, he says Ghana demands experience, not experiments. Is that what he's referring yes. to? Yes. And finally, ex Gratia, he says he will scrap it. How exactly is he going to go about that? In a minute. Well, with the ex Gratia, with the ex Gratia, it's a constitutional provision. And so clearly, as he said, constitutional processes will be triggered. And his goal is not just to, to reform the constitution, because that will require activating the constitutional reform processes that have been put in, in abeyance, and okay. including the, the, the ex gratia And I agree, because truly, I have been a beneficiary of Article 71, mm. both as a presidential staffer and now as a member of parliament. The disparity between those of us who hold Article 71 positions vis-a-vis -vis public and civil servants is like night and day. And when you have a government which then even extends it by trying, trying to bring in the spouses of the president and the vice president to become beneficiaries of Article 71, you have every so reason to So as a legislator, would you, would you, because he says the executive, but then it would, they would want it to extend to the legislature, the judiciary, and all of that. As a legislator, would you, would you accept Yes, I will support that because it, 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 is about, it, it is about equity and fairness. All right. And I believe that we have it is not now. equitable, it is not, it is not fair. And when he says that he is coming, he has the experience, it's about experience and not experimentation. 
I think the circumstances under which we find ourselves today in the Republic, where retirees are being given funny haircuts, clearly bear him out. Dr. Park, we're grateful that you've taken the time to it's a pleasure. this morning. And it's like I said, we'll keep having these discussions from both ends, the ruling administration and your uh, outfit as well. You are hoping to return to power. My only hope when I have these conversations with politicians, I always tell you, is that you stick to what you are saying. Be assured. I'm a vandal. The truth will stand. And your mama is a vandal. The truth will stand. Thank you, Dr. Park. Dr. Clement Park, Member of Parliament for Bwilsa South. He just joined us for a conversation. Uh, up next on the AM Show, we'll be telling you about Rehoboth Social Housing and its latest projects. If you're thinking housing, you want to stay for this conversation. Up next on the AM Show. Do stay. Welcome back on the AM show. Let's talk housing now. And who isn't concerned? We all would want that place to lay our heads, live in peace. It's one of those basic needs. But you need to get the right place. And that's why this morning we're telling you about Rehoboth Social Housing and its latest projects. You might have heard about Rehoboth Properties. Well, joining us for a discussion this morning, we have Ephraim Nyante, Sales and Marketing Team Lead, and Francesca uh, Chikata, Sales and Marketing Team Lead, as well with real both a very good morning to you lady morning. and gentlemen good morning i love your smiles <laughs> How, why do i get the feeling you're about to give me a house for free <laughs> <laughs> that's just on the lighter side all right uh, before we get into this whole package and the project that you've initiated tell us a bit about real both how long have you been around i know there's real both properties real both social housing but generally how long have you been around Okay, so we, um, Rehoboth Properties have been in existence for 10 years. We started, the whole company started around 2012. Okay. But the operation started 2013, 2014. So it's been just about 10 years then? Yes. Yeah. Mm. And within that time, I know you've had a lot of projects. Right before we came on air, I was pointing to one of their projects because I go in that area, Kwabinya, right? Yes. You have a property there. Yeah. But, but let's talk about Rehoboth um, Social Housing. Why this distinction, uh, properties, social housing? What is different about the social housing a bit different? Okay, so the social housing, I mean, is, is, is to in, intervene. We are bringing in a social intervention. Okay. Yes. Social intervention. Yes. Mm. That is, the, we, the properties, renewable properties mark a 10 years anniversary. Mm -hmm. And out of that, uh, to say thank you and to appreciate the our customers and the Ghanaian, we decided to come up with a social intervention project, which is the Rehobo Social Housing. Mm. Yes, I see. It's it's a very interesting. I, I wanted to say something, but I'll save that for later. Francisca, why should anyone choose Rehobo Social Housing? And I, I mean, there are other projects that people have come up with, even government-run projects. This is a private developer. Yeah. Why should people come to Rehobo for this social housing? package that you have. Okay, to answer to that, I'll add on to it and you get more about our social housing thing that we are doing. In our way of saying thank you to, um, to the society for supporting us throughout these 10 years, um, rebel social housing in the means that um, we have apartments, we have um, other properties like the court, that was the first project that we started with. Okay. But currently, Looking at the current economic trend, we came up with that and we should do something that will help a low or a middle income earner. An average house for, um, for our properties, the one at the courts, is around 1.2 billion Ghana, Ghana, Ghana cities. But this social housing is around 480,000 Ghana cities. I see. Yeah. So averagely, when it comes to your properties, you're looking at around... A million plus, but but when it comes to this social one, housing, yes. so that's the difference. Yeah, that's the difference. difference. That's less than half. Yes. yes. So he's really targeting 
the you mid, know, the middle income, the income, the middle income yeah. is top tier. You can go for the other one, but yes. middle income, there's something for you yes. as well, yes. Yes. right? So this is a way of saying thank you thank to society, you to basically. Society. Yes. Mm. And and for you, Ephraim, so. Tell us about the houses, the, the types of units you have available. I'm sure people are wondering, one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom, four yeah. bedroom, en suite. What, what do you have? What are the packages? Tell us about them. Okay, so for, for social housing, we have two and three bedroom houses. Yes, in a gated community. Two and three bedroom in, houses. In a gated community. Okay. And it's not just a gated community. It comes with, I mean, a beautiful environment, serene environment. You get a great view right beneath the foothills of the Brie, the Brie Mountains. And also we have a commercial center, talking about shopping malls. We have Crutch as well for the, I mean, residents within that community. Mm. Yes, we also have the recreational park. Uh, I mean, looking, when you look within, within that enclave, we have the largest park in terms of uh, recreational. So playground. Play, yeah. Yes. Recreation is important. Yes. Uh, oftentimes we don't. Very well pay enough attention yes. to that. You go to other jurisdictions yes. and there are parks here, parks yes. there. Yes. It also helps even children develop. Yes. But we even created that. That's even an opportunity for the residents. Maybe if you want to have a little event within the community, you can, look, you can go to the park. I mean, not... But you have a country, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's way subsidized. Yeah. It's subsidized yeah. for, the, for the resident. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Tell us about the other packages. So it's a gated community, which is good yeah. uh, in terms of security. Yeah. You have a crash, likely it will keep developing. Maybe uh, pharmacies, maybe even a clinic yeah. in there somewhere. Yes. But what, what are some of the other packages, apart from what he's mentioned, that you have now or that you are looking forward to eventually also bringing into the community? Okay, so actually tomorrow is our opening house and we are inviting everybody to come and have a look at what we have there. And our special package, we, are, we, we have a special package for the first 50, 50 people to sign up. First 50? First yes. 50. So aside all the... Is that for the viewing or purchasing? For purchasing. For purchasing, yes. Okay. So aside all the uh, things that we the third road, the recreational area... And we, we have electricity have and water, water flowing 24-7. Mm. Yeah. So aside all these, we are topping you up with the Whoopi... Um, special package once you sign up for the first, for 50, the first people. 50 people so first 50 people yeah. who will make a purchase a yeah. purchase initial deposits full payments there's a, spe so a special package for tell for us about the package i mean i'm sure they would want to know that look you're talking about 400 plus thousand right yeah if i come what am i going to get i'm sure some that Cody boy is watching and say, Masa, oh, my mommy buy 5% and not 3% and not 10%. The other person would do the mathematics quickly and say, tomorrow, <laughs> my neighbor, well, we, we don't there. want to let everything out. <laughs> so, <laughs> we don't want to give yeah. so we, we want you to, we come, want you to when come. come. When you come, you will definitely see the package. In fact, it's a good package. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, if you, if you want to go by the normal payments plan, there's a package for you. If you want to pay upfront right. or in cash, there's a, a good package for you as well. We, okay. are not, we are not leaving anybody out. Before we come to what we expect tomorrow, yeah. what are the other things? Usually when we have you know, real estate entities come here, they will tell you that for us, this is what makes us stand out. Mm -hmm. For us, this is what we stand for. Real both, in terms of your social housing, mm -hmm. what, what makes it stand out? You've mentioned a few, but is there something that stands out for real both that you can tell our audience that, look, when you come, this is what you will get. This is it. Okay, so as I all that we've mentioned, our social housing is not just an ordinary house. Let's take the unit, for instance. Mm. Our um, tiles are porcelain tiles, not just terrazzo or whatever. We use the quality furnishing. Porcelain is expensive. We also um, install fitted cabinets in all the units. The ceramics, are, the um, sanitaries are all quality. Yes. So it is not just affordability, but it comes with a bit of luxurious as attached to it as well. So mm. affordable luxury. Yeah, luxury. Affordable luxury. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Affordable luxury. luxury. Um, yeah. Okay, wait, then you now pay. Yeah. Let's talk about let's start talking about tomorrow. But I see you want to ask something. Yeah, so um for the projects, so at the social house we are putting up, up about thousand six hundred units. And, yes, but currently, currently, at the first phase, that's the first one uh, A is actually sold out. One A is sold out. How many units are we looking at? We are looking at two hundred plus. 
Wow. Yeah. So if it's about 1,200, that 1, would be about... 1,600 units. 1,600 units. In total. Units. Okay, so that would be about one-sixth of yeah. it, yeah. right? Yeah. So the That's first one, phase 1A one is sold out. Phase 1B is, I mean, part is even Born. sold. Ah, yes. Tell you guys, you are doing business. <laughs> <laughs> I see. So even more reason for you to come on board. If so many people are coming on board, there must be a reason, right? It means they are getting something... Right. Let's start talking about tomorrow, though. Um, Francesca, I'll start with you. What can those who come tomorrow for the open house, the viewing, what can they expect, especially as, look, when you come, come with your checkbooks and all of that, because you, if you slack and you're not in the top 50, you might lose out on that deal. What can ordinary people coming expect? They should um, come with... Um big expectations because for about social housing, even there's a social housing, then the luxurious way that we've added, yeah. it's the, the whole environment will wow you. And like you said, it should come with their checkbooks. And actually, the, it's free. We don't charge anything. Anyone, our doors are open. And it is also, it's going to be fun as well, yes. not just about, it'll be fun and business as well. So we are actually calling on the general public, public. to okay. come in tomorrow. I mean, and then come and experience the environment and then the, the housing units that we have to offer. We are also calling on our, I mean, our burden of folks in the diaspora. I mean, you can, I believe they are watching us so they can call on their representatives, maybe family members to come over to, I mean, uh, experience the place and then give them a feedback, which I know is going to be a positive one. So we are not just um, calling on the local folks, we are also calling on the diasporans to also get their family members to come through. And they're calling yeah. you. To, yes, we, since you to, are saying to, to, <laughs> to, to melt some of the foreign <laughs> currency and come into the system. Again. Yes, you mentioned you've been coming to uh, are you meant to <laughs> so, You're exposing me. Okay. <laughs> so we are inviting you to, to, to the, to the uh, open yeah, house. Yeah, I go tomorrow. and walk. I go and walk. <laughs> they, they, they are selling. Uh, you, one of these days, I'll, I'll definitely pass through. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe sure, tomorrow, sure. Is I, I, tomorrow, I, I, is tomorrow is a Saturday. Saturday. It, it does the, the, the event day itself, mm -hmm. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, uh, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's just about two minutes drive from the tow boat. Mm -hmm. But we'll be mounting uh, flag poles as, as well as directional signs. To give directions. To yeah, people. so it's not something you'll miss. Where can your social housing you know, outfit be located? You've already started talking about it. Give us further details for anyone who might want to. Uh, come for the program. Okay, so the social housing or Rehobo social housing, that's the community is Rehobo Havens. It's located Rehobo Havens. Havens. Okay. Yeah, that is the community. Right. It's located at uh, Danfa. Okay. Uh, yes, right uh, beside Ayimansa. The tow booth. Yeah, the tow booth. It's just about two minutes drive from the tow booth. And as I mentioned, we have directional signs as well as flagpoles on the on the stretch from Ayimansa towards. Our, our community. So it's not something that you 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 miss. You can't miss it. Just come that way. You'll see the directional signs and you just follow them. Even if you, you don't come and see me, uh, just follow them and you'll get there. You will land at Rehoboth Social Housing. Uh, give us, uh, maybe some people might want to call certain numbers or know what your website address is. Can you help us, Francesca? Yeah, so if you are coming and you need any further assistance or direction, just call us on 055-375-1933. And Can you repeat? Take it a bit more. 055-375-1933. Yes. One last time. 055-375-1933. Okay. You can also That's call, call. 020-682-3524. The numbers are on your screen. Uh, you can look at that as well. 020 Six five six eight two six eight two three five two four. Okay, those are the numbers to call. It's on your screen uh, now. Uh, that number he just mentioned zero two zero six eight two three five two four or zero five five three seven five one nine three three. And uh, the the so email website. address is there. So is that a capital S for the sales? Is a, is a small S. There. Okay, so sales at realbotsocialhousing.com. Dot com. And you can also go to the website. www.rebelsocialhousing.com I see your, your UK office also there. Yes. Yeah, so our, our um, brothers in the brothers and sisters in the, the UK, we have uh, the office in Milton Keynes. 
and the R numbers have been displayed on the screen. So you can just walk into the office, Milton Keynes, or just call them, and they will gladly assist you. All right, so whether home or abroad, you can reach out to Rehoboth Social Housing and uh, bring us your kwacha, and we'll give you a good house. That's basically what they are saying. Any final words, um, Francisca and Ephraim? Okay, so... Who goes first? Uh, so, you, as I mentioned earlier, we would want to call on the general public, I mean, both local and then our folks in the diaspora, you can get your reps or family members to come over tomorrow to give you a positive feedback as to what we have to offer tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be, it's not just about business, it's going to be fun as well. So we are inviting everyone to come through. Come have fun and let's talk business as well. We've been uh, joined by Ephraim and Francisca, but you've not had your last bite, right? Over to you. Okay, so we'd like to also call on government workers and equally the Ministry of um, Finance and Local Government and the Ministry of um, Works and Housing to also come and, if possible, get, get some good rates for government workers, good incentive for government workers to equally jump on the affordability ladder. Mm. So tomorrow is going to be fun, as you said, as well. So. All roads tomorrow lead to Rehoboth Social Housing, Ayimensa Dampfa area. Even if you get missing, just get to the toll booth and follow the signages and you'll land right there. Remember, for the first 50 who make a purchase, whether you're paying in full or paying in installments or whatever, you get a package, right? Yes. Certainly. Okay. So be one of the first 50. Thank you so much, Ephraim. Thank you, Francesca. Ephraim Yante is the sales and marketing uh, team lead. We also have Francesca Chikata, sales and marketing uh, team lead. Stay with us. Up next, we have another interesting conversation. It has to do with the Kwaba Foundation's drive to get you to donate blood. Our outfits, health outfits are running out of blood. How can we contribute? That conversation up next on the AM Show. Do stay. Well, time now for us to tell you about the state of our blood banks and more how you can donate blood to ensure that when that person, who knows, your relative, it could be me, I go to that hospital facility, I'll have access to blood. It's all about Kwaba Foundation's drive to get you to donate blood. And joining us for the conversation, Stephen Downsow is Blood Programs Officer with the National Blood Service. We also have Mami Kwaba. She says she, I can call her Mami K. She is director, KSEMS Group, founder, Kwaba Foundation, brand ambassador, National Blood Service. What title is not also? Mami K. Good to have good to have both of you join the conversation. Thank you. Stephen Thank you. and Thank you. Thanks so for what? having Ma us. Mami K. Not Mami K. No, either. I'm ruffling it. Let's let's start with you, Stephen. Yeah. What is the state of our blood banks? Uh, over the last two years, I have seen drives, some of which have been on our platform. I remember on the Pulse, uh, you come, you talk about the fact that Chale Mujano, What is the state now? Yes. Currently, we I would say we don't uh, um, we don't have enough, but. We, we, we have some blood because we had a lot of support from um, some institution like uh, MTN donating blood nationwide. Um, also, they also supported our schools. So we had some blood from them. Hamadia Muslim Mission also organized a blood and a, nation, um, a national conference and they donated blood in January. And that also has supported us. So for now, it's okay. but. Uh, the, we also have the Catholic um, yeah. church. That is also I, I was about to say, say churches, no? because I think last year I donated about twice. Yes. In my, in my and life. they are doing oh, well. Parish, oh, nice. And the ICGC is also, we're going to, next we're going to start a nationwide um, blood donation exercise. So I'll say so far, so good. But we, we will still have having challenges because the problem is that blood have a short shelf life and people need to donate on a regular basis. 
Other than that, even if you should have 10,000 units of blood in, within a week, and afterwards people are not donating, we're still going to um, run out of um, uh, blood. So there's the need for all of us to donate. And also for now, we have our blood board established. Yes, and uh, we also have a new CEO. A that, blood board? Yes. Okay. Yes, so it has been established. We also have our new CEO, that is Dr. Shelley Ofori, uh, uh, also Ofori, who is now our new CEO. Okay, that's interesting. So we're making progress. Yes, you are. And making, at least you are making the, progress. Uh, like that saying goes, I may not be where I want to be, but thank <laughs> God I am not where I used to be. Yes, so yes. we are not where we used to be when yes, you yes, know some of your yes. members came on the platform and they were lamenting bitterly. Mm -hmm. but let me come to you, uh, Mami Kay. Yeah. We're in March, mm -hmm. and we're we're going to March. Tell us about the March March. Thank you. And as always, thanks to Joy Multimedia for making this possible. Mm. So this is our sixth year. Okay. March, March, uh, March for the month of March, and March like a walk in, like you rightly said. Right. It's a blood donation awareness walk. So we use this as an opportunity to generate awareness about the need to give blood. Um, it's like an awareness campaign. We used okay. to do this in the Ebri area, Sayi Mensa, up to and we okay. did that um, for about three, four years. COVID hit. We did a virtual one, one of the, I think, 2021. So it was virtual in Ghana and the USA. And then last year, we went to La Boma Beach, which is very successful, as always. Okay. And then this year, we're going back to La Boma in Accra. So Laboma Beach is next to Labadi Beach Hotel. I mean, when you cross the little lagoon, you're right there. It starts in the morning, 5.30. Um, if you have any red t-shirt, white t-shirt, we're supposed to show us solidarity. And um, this year's uh, World Blood Donor Day theme is um, donating blood is an act of solidarity, so join the effort to save lives. So any red or white t-shirt to show that we're all together. We're going to start from there, walk through the La Township, and then back to Laboma. So the second half of the walk will actually be on the beach. And then once we get there, there's going to be a lot of fun activities, you know, music, dancing, aerobics, um, you know, just things to entertain people. Because blood, like I keep saying, it's not necessarily the most exciting topic to talk about. Anytime you talk about blood, it means somebody needs it or somebody's in the hospital. But we want to associate blood with the happy moments of life. And then once you have people playing games and stuff, like that, it's a way to engage them so that now you can start that conversation going. But also more importantly, there's also going to be a blood donation activity happening right. there. And that's actually the second, the, we, we did the first ever blood drive at the beach. So imagine, you know, meet me there at the beach and actually donating blood. I mean, um, it's a very good feeling. And so we're going to have blood donation there. So either way people can support. You can support by walking. You can support by telling other people about it or um, donating blood. We'll get into, we'll get into some good. of the other ways. But Sounds good. So she's already yeah. mentioned it. What are some of the ways, the other ways we can support this very worthy cause? Because you never know when you will be mm -hmm. in need of blood. Yes, we, we need more education or intensive education is the only way, one of the ways of promoting or increasing voluntary blood donation. A lot of people are not really aware about the need, even the need to donate blood. So we say thumbs up to Mami Kwaba and uh, her foundation for supporting us in that direction. In the case, in much, much has been the first um, blood donation aware, awareness campaign that has been organized for a couple of years. And uh, we also need to have our media um, engagement and also the media supporting us uh, to promote the need for us to donate blood. And we also want to appeal to the faith-based organizations, the corporate institutions to come on board. You know, we're having enough blood, not so much, but, but after uh, when COVID came in, so now there have been some challenges of getting enough blood to help save their lives. And all the blood that we collect, uh, to save ourselves. You could save your brother, your sister, a baby, or a citizen. So we still want to encourage people to donate on a regular basis. We have gotten some, a percentage of people, regular donors, who had stopped donating when COVID started. So we want them to still come back. We are one family and we need to help Have you other. reached out to these people? Yes, we have. We, would have... we have re reached out to them. We have a team called the Donor Recruitment Officer that visits and most of the institutions to talk to them. We also try to do more social media engagement and uh, media engagement. And um, some are responding to, some are responding. That's why I said this year, we, we have the ICGC coming on board again to organize the nationwide blood donation. The Khalid blood drive is also there, which is also nationwide. And we know that with this Methodist, SDA, other faith-based, other corporate organizations also come on board. And with all this, collectively, we have, we have enough blood to mm. help save the dying souls, babies, mothers who are severely anemic after delivery. 
road traffic accident victims will be saved with the blood that we donate. Right. We're basically going to contribute to saving lives. And what, what better gift can you give someone yeah. than to donate what can save their lives? Yeah. Uh, in this instance, and it's, it's something that we all can give, but, mm -hmm. but there are some conditionalities. Tell us, who can donate yeah. and what are some of the health benefits mm -hmm. of donating blood? Sure. And one thing we remind people is the fact that a lot of times you're not going to donate blood to save somebody's life. But invariably what ends up happening is that you're saving your own life yeah. because it also serves as a free health check so when you go much as we need the blood mm. the blood service is going to walk you through some questions to ensure that you're healthy right. you have more than not just enough you have excess blood to give and um, before you get, get on the bed and there have been a lot of instances where people realize that apparently they didn't have enough blood they had some health issues they didn't they, didn't, they weren't aware of and then the blood service will actually educate you advise you on what to do and everything is confidential mm. So one of the benefits, like you mentioned, is the fact that um, it's a free health check. Um, you also get to know your blood group. I mean, as you realize, you, you mentioned earlier, sometimes we don't have the blood. So imagine not knowing your blood group and now looking for the blood. By the time they actually find your blood group, that maybe yeah. it was there, somebody else um, would have taken it. Um, the other thing is that um, it reduces your risk of heart diseases and some ailments, so it's really good. Um, when you give out the blood, like I said, the excess, the excess that's doing nothing for you. And so once you give out the excess blood, within 24 to 48 hours, once you take any beverage, you know, water, the volume of the blood You'll be comes able to back. replenish that. You're able to replenish that. So you get Is there six blood. points we, we have? Or no, no, no. No, just one unit of blood. Unit of no, blood. I mean in, in the body, generally. Oh. I think uh, I, I've, I've been to one of these. But, and you're yes. just giving just a little. Yeah. Yes, less than, four, um, less than a sachet of water. Or less right. than, it's, that's a 450 oh, mils. Right. 450 ml. Less than the 500 milliliter yes. Yes. sachet yes. water yes. mass. Exactly. But the quantity of blood in an average adult or a donor, a potential donor, is about um, four liters. Okay. Or, or I would say that if you want to compare to the ml, that is about 10. Okay. Yes. So averagely, because blood cannot be artificially manufactured, our system has been designed in such a way that a, a potential donor have excess blood to give. Right. So we all have excess blood to give. So that is what we, we're going to check. We're going to check whether you have enough blood before you, you donate. So we we'll check your blood level. Right. And then also talking about who qualifies to donate blood. If whoever falls between the ages of 17 to 60 years in good health qualifies to donate blood. But before okay. then, M we'll mention the age range again. 17 yeah, between to 60. 17 to 60 years. Okay. You should be in good health. We have questionnaires that will guide you to find out whether you, you, are, you are actually fit. We also check your blood pressure, so your pressure should be okay. We check your pulse, and as I was saying, your blood level will also be checked. So and the all, weight, 50 kg. And the weight, the minimum weight for donating is 50 kilograms, 50 mm -hmm. kg. Oh, I see. So yes. even if the person meets all the requirements, but it's not up to 50 kg, no, no, the person will not be no. And that's yes. one thing I'll say about the blood service. They are very professional about mm -hmm. it. So much as we need the blood, they are not going to jeopardize you know, somebody else's health. Right. You, the donor, you are much more important than the patient. Mm -hmm. Like I keep telling people, like I give an analogy like a mango tree. We share, yeah, then every harvest, uh, yeah, you, you're never going to get mango. And a mango mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 yes, yeah, It must be ripe. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so if you, you are not ripe for yes. you know, right. yes. 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 So, the yes. picking, you so much as, go much, Yes, much as we need it, we'll make sure your health is much more important. You know, so we'll just right. check to make sure you are fine before. Um, you donate blood. I am curious. Okay. What if, let's say, mm -hmm. I come and mm -hmm. I'm under 50 kg, which I'm not, <laughs> because I've been donating, or mm -hmm. for some reason mm -hmm. I cannot donate? How then do I support the cause? Well, how, apart from donating blood, can I support this cause? Yes, you can be an advocate to the blood service, like what Mami K is doing. She's a blood donor and also an advocate, an ambassador, so you can promote blood drives. You can encourage a brother or a sister who qualifies, who meet might uh, have the good weight age to donate. So we can all help in diverse ways. You can also sponsor our blood drives and even the National Blood Service. So we have, all of us need to So when you say support. sponsor, what do you mean? So sponsor, I mean, um, financially. Um, okay. You can sponsor financially. I mean, I want or it to be very clear. No, yes. no, no de definitely. So assuming you're having it in church, I mean, let's say I'm 65, I'm having it in church, I can't donate blood. I'm sure you have a son or a nephew or niece or whatever who could donate, so you can encourage them to donate. Um, sponsor, maybe I'm a caterer, and so I decide that, oh, you know, um, usually the blood service will refresh you 
after the donation, but they usually wouldn't give you food before. Right. So you're supposed to eat before you donate blood. Right. But that's something they don't provide. So you can decide that, you know what, any, when the donor comes in and says, oh, most of them won't come back. So you may have to make sure that at least there's food there, just in case they haven't eaten, right then they give them something. So you can offer say that because I'm a caterer or oh, may doc no be an you know, meat pie or something for the donors. Mm. Um, so and then financially, because I mean it, it takes I was money waiting and for that. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, takes someone money says, and look, effort. I can't donate, but I have ten K <laughs> money and, oh, and use it oh, to gladly. So I appreciate it so much. <laughs> As you can see, I mean, it takes a lot of effort, a lot of sponsors to come on board to get this happening, you know, a lot of teamwork, yeah, you can do that. And also, if you have any skill, so let's say you're a designer, a graphic designer, whatever, you can decide to, you know, for your church, be able to do the flyer on their behalf and share. Again, what you guys are doing, we join multimedia, like I keep saying, the media sets our agenda. So um, this is not just going to end in this room, but because of the reach you have, people outside um, Accra are even going to hear about that. So every skill, everybody has something to add, something to give. And it takes t um, teamwork because you need the media, you need um, the person convincing the donors, you need the nurses, right. um, you need the donors, you know, we can't, we need each other. Yeah. So, so to wrap the conversation, I want mm -hmm. us to address two things. Mm -hmm. I know you have other blood donation drives activities mm -hmm. going on. Stephen, mm -hmm. I will let you address yeah. that. Tell mm -hmm. us about that. And I would have you wrap the conversation, sure. your final words, to do with the inter-school you know, uh, situation, that drive. So sure. you, I'll, I'll start with you, Stephen. Those will be your final words. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so every week, we are always on the move. We are on the move on weekends, Sundays. And for, for next week, for instance, our schedules are booked. That's the Southern Zona Blood Center. We will be going to some of the ICGC churches, uh, Faith and Miracle, mm. Restoration, uh, Resurrection Temple, in the, the, the southern parts, I mean, Teshi and the Nungwa area. And then um, also, um, we, regionally, we also have collections. I can't give the, the exact venues, but we have a lot of sessions going on. And we still want to appeal to all Ghanaians that whoever, wherever you find yourself, you can assist us, either being a blood donor or uh, an advocate or a sponsor. So let's all help each other because we, you can be a potential donor in a moment, and the next moment you may be the recipient. And blood needs to be readily available in our health facilities before even a patient is rushed there. So, and, um, so that all the time we always be keep um, fit or in good health. Because when you visit the hospital and you need blood and there's no blood, then you're going to end up something else. All right. Briefly, Mami sure. King. So um, you asked about the inter-school blood donation campaign. And one of the things that most people don't realize is the second cycle schools keep the blood bank alive. So whenever the school's on break, you know, the blood bank is always, you know, crying for blood and all that. Now, um, people don't know that. And it's about time that, you know, um, that, that visibility was there. So if you can think about, you know, there's also the school, the school pride, you know, uh, I'm a proud hope son. I went to the child. <laughs> and, um, you know, once you start that, you know, with, with that intercore, um, math and science quiz, you know what the math and science quiz did, you know, everybody, all the past students, everybody was kind of involved. Right. And like I said, blood takes all of us. So this um, inter-school blood donation campaign is a way to have a very healthy competition amongst um, the schools to recognize their efforts and to encourage them to do more. Um, if this is, if everybody embraces this, trust me, it could more than double our blood supply. So you've heard it from the horse's own mouth. Uh, let's all come together, pool our resources, and donate blood so that all of us can stay healthy. Uh, those who joined us for this conversation, Mami K, and of course, uh, Stephen uh, Danso, Blood Programs Officer, National Blood uh, Service. And Mami Kwaba, Director, Kaysen's Group, Founder Kwaba Foundation, Brand Ambassador, National Blood Service. Well, come, let's generate awareness about the need to give blood and save lives as we walk. Let's also think of ways in which we can improve our environment. Ghana needs you. The date, Saturday, 4th March, 2023 time. Uh, the walk starts 5.30 a.m. from the La Boma Beach through the La Township and back to La Boma Beach. Uh, it will be followed by lots of fun activities. There will also be an opportunity to donate blood for those who can. Remember, it is an awareness walk. So please come either way. Dress code, sporty white or red t-shirt. It's powered by k Group, Kwaba Foundation, and the National Blood Service. Ghana Media Sponsors, Joy FM, Joy News, Adam TV, BNFT, GTV, Sunny TV, other partners or sponsors, Lily Rice, Cocoa Processing Company, that is Golden Tree, Blue Skies, West African Rescue Association, Stobe Law, Royal Aroma, Fortified, 
uh, La Boma Beach Resort, Juju Juice, Stylista Ghana, Indomie, Sinewave, Engineering, and Everpack. Please come. Someone's life depends on you. Let your blood count. I love that. Let your blood count. Well, as we get ready to wrap up on the conversation, I want to thank, in a very special way, all those who have sent me uh, lovely messages on my birthday. You know what I want for my birthday gift? Join them and donate blood. That's what I want for my birthday, right? Happy, happy birthday. Um, oh. But, Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. And some of my very favorite people are here. Hooray! Bless you you now. May God bless you now. May God bless you now. You now. You now. I, I, I just want to... And, and this is nice. I just want to say a very big thank you. This was a wonderful surprise I got this morning. Um... For whoever did this for me, I just want to say, God richly bless you. I didn't expect this. It's amazing. And the artist is amazing. I'll find some time and shout the artist himself. But whoever did this, uh, some are saying the picture, the, the portrait fine past me, sir. Yeah. <laughs> your enemy, your enemy okay, I'm very good at your enemy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, crew. But let me also do this. Apparently, I shared today with another prominent uh, person, former vice chancellor, just a sec, former vice chancellor of the University of Health and Allied Sciences, Professor John Japong. It's from your beautiful wife, Professor Margaret Japong, and all your children. Prof, happy birthday to you. Share in our joy. Any? And just to add what you're saying, you know, right. every day is somebody's birthday. So even if you have 0.0001% of birthday participants hmm. giving blood, would ensure that every day the blood bank is stocked. Yeah. So that's kind of how this actually started. It was a birthday campaign. It was a milestone birthday, and that's what How about we do point. this? Whenever it's your birthday, or your, you just yes. go there and, and donate, donate blood. blood. Think day about it. Month. Yeah. We could start it right here. On, yes, on the exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's, that's so, what it is. Every day somebody's birthday. So just imagine. To tomorrow. So, so, to someone tomorrow. is asking whether I've donated. I donated twice last year. <laughs> twice. Oh, and wow. we're still, we're going to have some donations this year as well. Yeah. Okay, Awojifa, cool. you sent me a message wishing me a happy birthday. Yamisha Awate. All the best. And um, up next, we have on this network, Joy News Desk with our fantastic crew. Uh, stay tuned for the best in the news. We'll be right back.